Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob, and today we're doing a solo playthrough of Elder Sign, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, Elder Sign is a push-your-luck dice game from the Arkham Horror File series. Uh, it's like supposed to give you, I guess, the feeling of playing a full game of Arkham Horror, but in a smaller, quicker dice game. Uh, <laughs> Sajat's asking, hello everyone joining live. Sajat's asking, so tell us Rob, why this game, why now? Uh, so this game uh, is a game I, here's my history with Elder Sign. So Elder Sign came out in 2011, it's been around for a long time. Uh, I just got it a couple weeks ago. I assumed, uh, oh, first, first, first. Never got into it when I first saw it. When I first got into the board game hobby, you know, 2012 around there, uh, I was really into FFG games from the start. And I checked this game out, but again, the, uh, it's the same story for all the Arkham Horror, you know, Cthulhu Mythos kind of games. Uh, that theme just didn't appeal to me. I just didn't care. I was already like overloaded with all the other games uh, in the industry that were just drawing my attention uh, with IPs and themes that just like pulled me in and, and mechanics and things like that. Um, but this game, I recall when I was, uh, basically there was a comic book slash board game store around the corner from my work. And every Thursday people would meet up to play board games. I would go there just to meet up with people and play card games, like whatever current LCG I was playing at the time, uh, just get some practice games in before tournaments and stuff. But, uh, one time I went, I was early and waiting for other players to show up and there were some people playing this game on the table. And they asked if I wanted to join because it could take up to eight players. And I was like, uh, I can't be tied up in a game for long. And they were like, no, it's going to be a fast game. So I chose not to play, but I sat there and watched it for a bit. And, uh, yeah, the luck, the luck of rolling dice if you don't have mitigation and stuff just seemed like, all right, it's not really the game for me. Just on appearance from watching it for like a half hour, I was like, this game seems kind of lame. But that was my attitude at the time. And remember, my only real experience at the time were playing like very competitive card games, Game of Thrones board games, second edition, stuff like that. It looked to me like a not as cool Zombicide because it was just like a lot of like moving around the little board and rolling dice. I was like, okay, it's like Zombicide without the miniatures. That was my impression at the time, my simple-minded... Uh, early in the board game hobby attitude towards it. Uh, so I passed on it recently uh, through five years of pressure. We started playing Arkham Horror LCG on the channel. We've been playing it every Sunday. Uh, but originally the game that actually got me to look at the Cthulhu Mythos theme was Mansion of the Madness Second Edition. We got that a couple years ago. I bought all the expansions at the time. Mel and I started playing it. We played it with some friends. I fell in love with it. I thought it was very good. Um, annoying, frustrating. But I still thought it was a very well done game. I love the app integration. I, I, I sort of like the theme more and realizing like, wait, this seems pretty cool actually. Uh, and it lends itself very well to board gaming. So being late to the party, I then was kind of like, well, we like Manch the Madness. I love LCGs. So the pressure from the chat and our, our producers and stuff, I was like, all right, let's play some Arkham Horror. Let's try it out. Uh, so we eventually tried out Arkham Horror, and again, I was like, okay, I see what they're doing. Same thing, like, you know, make you feel hopeless, the theme's cool. I bought some books to try to read Arkham Horror, get into, our, um, you know, Lovecraft myth, Lovecraft mythos and stuff. And yeah, so now I'm just like, I'm going to go and try all the cool games that people were recommending with this theme on it. Uh, so I thought this game was out of print when they announced the X-Men reskinning of this game. Uh, that FFG is coming out with. I keep forgetting the subtitle to it. Uh, X Men something or other. I it, I don't know. Let me find out. Because those who are watching today may not be interested in this one, but if you want it with an X Men theme, like a Marvel theme on it, uh, it's basically the same game. X Men Mutant Insurrection. So yeah, Mutant Insurrection. X Men Mutant Insurrection, twenty twenty one uh not getting the greatest reviews but it's literally like they just took richard lanius's design and kind of reworked it to fit the x-men theme uh so supposedly this is a just an updated version so i thought when ffg announced this and i hadn't seen elder sign in stock for a long time i thought elder sign was going out of print and they were just going to pump this game out there and only worry about this game but like two-ish weeks ago, I got the notification. I had this on my wish list for a while. I got the notification that the game was back in stock and they're, they're still printing it. And I was shocked by that. Uh, so I grabbed me some Elder Sign and, and it came back out. So Elder Sign, 
rated slightly better, not much better, uh, but a weight of 2.3 complexity, 90 minutes supposedly playing time, one to eight players, best with four. I have not played it more than one solo game. I'm not super pro with this game, not super experienced, haven't played it a ton. Um, I'm just still experiencing it, but we are playing today one player. And then on Monday in like three days, Mel and I will try it two player. Um, but yeah, seems fun. I don't know. I wasn't expecting much from this game, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I just grabbed it because it was cheap. Uh, it was back in stock. And I thought, yeah, I'll try it. People were telling me to try Elder Sign before. Uh, every time we play Mansion of Madness, people ask if we played Elder Chore, Arkham Horror, Elder Sign, Arkham Horror LCG. All these, these games keep getting thrown out. Like, you should try this. You should try that. So that's what I'm doing. So that's the long answer to Sajat's question of why now? Why play in this game? And it's Friday. It's casual Friday today. We're going to play a casual game. Uh, and I'm treating it that way. So, But if you've played a thousand hours of Arkham, or Elder Sign, Elder Sign uh, feel free to get involved. Play along. Tell me I should go here. You know, what we should do. We're going to pick everything random. We're going to pick our, our old one random. Or Elder one. Elder God. Old one. We're going to pick that random. Our character random. Set up the board. All that stuff's going to be random. So we're just going to have some fun just playing through the game today. Trying it out a little more. Um, and then anyone who's never heard of it, I guess, or who people are new to the hobby or people who come to this channel for other games, you know, you're playing Gloomhaven or something, you never heard of this little, little small box game, uh, from Fantasy Flight from like 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> Elder Arkham Sign Horror Wars. Yeah, that's this one. Exactly, Sacabra. <laughs> And yeah, this isn't small or short. I was going to make a joke um, how this was FFG, uh, or let's see here, actually. What is the first Tiny Epic game? That's what I want to know. Tiny Epic Kingdoms 2014? Is there, is there other ones earlier? Or is that like the oldest? Is Tiny Epic Kingdoms the first Tiny Epic game? Probably, right? Oh, that great overview. I just assume this was F. Uh, I assume Gamelin Games, who makes these uh, Tiny Epic games, uh, saw what Fantasy Flight was doing here with Elder Sign and trying to sm print small cards and small tokens, and uh, thought they would, you know, build a whole company off of making tiny games. Uh, so this is FFG originating the Tiny Epic game, sort of, uh, where it's trying to be an epic game but in a tiny package uh, with components that are like. The tokens are like, yeah, here. Like the tokens in this game, like are ridiculously small. Lots of mini cards, which I am not a fan of. Uh, but at least they don't, you don't have to build them in a hand. But like, like these tokens are so tiny. It, it's like weird. Like I, I was like popping out the cardboard. Like they made them the size of a die. So you could place a die on your character. But this is your character token that you're supposed to move around the board. And for reference, here's a tiny card. And here's the token. So you guys know how small these tiny cards are, these mini mini USA or whatever size cards. This is your character token that you're literally moving around the board. So yeah, I, I, it should come with its own magnifying glass. I, I, agree, I agree, GG. Even these like uh, stamina and health tokens, they're all super small. Your clue tokens, are these little boots. They're super tiny, like just the same size. They're like really small. Uh, and, and here's your Doom Track tokens, which get even smaller. And it's crazy they use tarot size cards. Uh, you figured they'd give you a little bit bigger tokens, but look how small these tokens get. Like it's so tiny. Uh, so yeah, I understand if you're watching this and you have no idea where my character is because I'm not gonna zoom in on, on every single spot trying to find it. I may lose track where my character is, so help me out. Uh, but yeah, all tiny cards, tiny text, except for these tarot size cards here. And, and these tar these are tarot size cards. Um, but again, it, just like a tiny epic game, they're building the board out of cards. Uh, it feels very tiny epic, this game, to me. Except for it's in a slightly bigger box. <laughs> Kate says, but everything being small, Means if you work at it, you can fit three expansions for this game into the core box with the main game. <laughs> and yes, this was designed back in the days when FFG was literally uh, designing the game with like 17 expansions in mind. And uh, yeah, this game 
feels pretty bare bones and I'm assuming that's because they already were planning expansions for like years and they were already designing them before the game even went on sale. Um, so yeah, so this game supposedly has a handful of expansions for it. Yeah, so John, I know I know about the small box for FFG stuff. I just thought it was funny with the tokens. I was just like, what? I didn't expect that from the box that, that they were going to be like the tiniest tokens I've ever seen. Uh, but it was silly. But uh, yeah, uh, I do have that uh, Space Hulk Death Angel or whatever. That's a small box game I have. I also have that other one, um, uh, Cond Condotier or whatever. And uh, there was another small box one I bought too. I can't remember the name. The blue box, they've like reprinted it since. It's like choosing roles. Uh, kind of like a light game, choosing roles and trying to build buildings and stuff. Uh, starts with Citadels. Citadels. I also have Citadels uh, from the small box. Small box FFG stuff, which is like, feels more like the tiny epic stuff. Hello, uh, Kate. Kate's gotta go. All right, see you later, Kate. Oh, Jot saying good luck. 4G will disappear soon. Excellent. Yeah, Citadels is the game. Yes, yes. Yeah, I have those three from the small box FFG series. Uh, which was like the tiny epic before there was tiny epic. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly, I find it hard to pick up these tokens. They're super annoying. Uh, so before we get into it, uh, I just want to... So I saw something today, uh, this weekend for anyone in the US, North America, whatever. Uh, Gen Con this weekend is badge registration for in-person Gen Con in September. It's been delayed till. And I was super hyped that, you know, I missed Gen Con last year. I was super hyped that I could be able to go to it this year after getting some needles in my arms uh, and hopefully would be able to go. Um, but I've decided not to because I figured this would happen. Uh, and here's what I'm talking about. So it's kind of appropriate. We're playing an FFG game. We're playing a lot of FFG games lately. They're my favorite publisher. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I love going there. I, I have a nostalgia to going there and getting the latest and greatest stuff from FFG a little early, getting press copies, seeing people that work for the company. A lot of them don't anymore. Um, but just going and chatting with people I haven't seen in a while, people I played tournaments with, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, FFG's always been cool to me, like filming tournaments and attending worlds and stuff like that. It always been really nice. And the OP organized play department, which doesn't really exist there anymore. Uh, they used to be awesome. So they were all at Gen Con. I love going to see FFG. Uh, it was always a good time. Uh, but Fancy Play Games decided to not physically participate in Gen Con 2021. Uh, but they'll be focusing on supporting Gen Con Online, which just means they're going to just run live streams on their own channel during that time. So whoopie do. They, they might have some announcements. But again, you don't need to go to Gen Con to see it. You can chill. Just just watch the replays on YouTube after. Um, but also, uh, which is the same company, Asmodee USA. Uh, so this means like you're not going to see Z-Man Games booth, uh, no Asmodee booth, no uh, any any all the different booths. They they take up like so many booths. All the different um, companies underneath Asmodee North America. So this makes sense why FFG is not there. Uh, and Asmodee slash FFG are like one of the biggest um, sponsors of Gen Con. They have like the biggest floor space in the dealer hall, advertising space everywhere, ads in the catalogs, all that stuff. Uh, and they decide to step out. So is Paizo. Paizo is one of the big supporters for anyone that knows like Pathfinder and Starfinder and stuff. Uh, Paizo is not going to have a physical presence and they have one of the biggest booths. They have one of the biggest gaming rooms there, just full of people playing RPGs. They run a ton of events 24-7. Uh, a lot of people go to Gen Con just for the RPG side of it, and uh, yeah, no Paizo. Uh, so, and a lot of smaller publishers, if you just search on Twitter, uh, and they're all announcing it this weekend because badge sales go on sale on Sunday, I believe, so in two days. And so I, I, they feel a lot of people should know, you know, if you plan on going to Gen Con to go and, you know, buy a bunch of games from a certain publisher, or, you know, you go attend their events to try their games out, uh, they will not be there, so... A lot of small companies, uh, a lot of big companies are all backing out. You're going to see more of this happening. So because of that alone, I've decided not. I'm not even going to buy badges. I'm not going to go to Gen Con. I'm not going to book hotels. Nothing. So I'm going to pass on Gen Con in person 2021. And also Origins. I, I don't see why I would go to Origins, which is only a few weeks after this. Um, and and I'm sure a lot of the publishers. I was already a smaller convention. 
Um, so I'm assuming if people are pulling out of Gen Con around the same time, I'm assuming they're not going to Origins, so it's going to be even a smaller convention. Uh, so for that reason, I'm just not going to go. Uh, so yeah, just letting you guys know. Um, but yeah, for anyone who's booking badges this weekend, do your research. Go in the Gen Con groups, and you'll see lists of all the publishers announcing. There's companies that run a lot of RPG events. Uh, they're stepping back, and they're not showing up, so... So yeah, just even though there's physical conventions happening this year, just be weary. They're they're not going to show up. Uh, there won't be as many publishers. And I know they're publicly their marketing department, their PR department, uh, will say they're keeping their staff, partners, and customers safe. But I had assumptions this was going to happen, and there are rumors that Gen Con, and I don't know if other other uh, other companies are doing this are still charging full price for floor space and booths at the convention. Uh, so, and they're also limiting attendance to at least half. So if I'm a publisher and I go to Gen Con and I know how many employees I bring, I gotta pay for meals, hotels for all my employees, I gotta ship games there, I gotta pay for a booth. You know, I'm spending this many days away from doing my normal business. Uh, and you're telling me there's gonna be half as many customers I can sell stuff to? Uh, why would you spend the money to go and promote your stuff there when you can just run a stream online um, is what I think is happening. So I think a lot of the companies didn't want to put the money in when there's going to be less people showing up. So I, I think this is a result of Gen Con announcing just it's going to have like drastically reduced attendance. And in past years, I've already heard publishers complain, uh, smaller, medium publishers complaining that the booths at Gen Con are so expensive and the time to go to a convention like this, a big convention, there's so much expense to it. And sometimes it makes or breaks a company. Like you will lose a ton of money going there and you may not recoup it, recoup it back in sales. So those who are thinking because these big publishers stepped away that small publishers will step in, uh, I don't think that's the case. I think even smaller publishers now won't go because people will back out because they're not going to see the big brands. So you can't feed off of that. So if you're going just to play games with friends, you might be okay, but remember the, the Gen Con Hall is not open 24-7. They're closing it every evening for cleaning. So, uh, yeah, it might not be the same experience, even if you don't care about going in the dealer hall. So I just figured I'd, I'd let people know, anyone who's planning on buying a badge this weekend, just know, do some research before you, you buy a badge, book a hotel, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, just be careful. Anyways, so yeah, there you go. All right. Yeah, Drazzy saying it'll be even more difficult to get tickets for large cons in 2022. Uh, they are rolling over badges though. A lot of them, I think, if you even bought a ticket this year and you decide to back out, I don't know if I don't know if now it will apply. So now that you kind of know, Gen Con might have fine print that says if you buy a badge after knowing all these publishers backed out. Um, but I knew when they were sending out surveys, Gen Con was saying, like, you know, what they were asking kind of questions and hinting in, in updates lately that even though some of the publishers will change, they'll have different people there, it'll still be a great con. And at least it said something in their last press release about at least we'll still be happy to see a bunch of your faces in person. So it'll still be a great convention. So in my mind, they already knew people were backing out and they're going to have trouble trying to hold an in-person convention. So, yeah. And Brian says Gen Con last year on Gen Con online last year was dumb. Hopefully, they figure out how to better run a con online this year. I'm not having any high hopes for it because if they're trying to run an in-person convention, I highly doubt they hired a bunch of people to run an online at the same time. So I have a feeling they're going to be very split. And uh, yeah, I don't expect much. I don't expect much at all. But uh, I think companies are just realizing Gen Con might be irrelevant, and these big conventions might be irrelevant. You can just post stuff on your own Twitch or YouTube channel. You can post updates online. Other YouTube channels will spread your news. People will just go online to order your games. So you don't really need to go to Gen Con or Origins or, you know, Essen to sell a game. You, you, you really don't. Um, COVID and lockdowns and the online ordering of everything, people are just getting used to it. So I think what will happen is people will just check out a review, read on BGG, find out if they like a game, and just go order it on Amazon. Like, it's going to turn out that way. 
if people just don't don't care and, and, and companies stop holding all their game releases for the big conventions. We'll see though. Maybe maybe it'll turn around. Maybe it'll turn around. Uh Yeah, I'm missing some chat here. So Sakabra saying, do you really think the border will be open in September? I'd say not likely. Yeah, it might not be. And that's another factor is like if I were to buy a badge now, I'm okay if my badge rolled over. I know Gen Con does that stuff. So what I what I was originally going to do, Sakabra, was still book a hotel that I could cancel uh, within, you know, 48 hours, get my full money back. And I was going to buy badges and stuff. And then just have them roll over if I didn't go. I was going to buy no event tickets. And just do stuff on the fly. Assuming the border was open. If it wasn't open, then I would go through the process of re-rolling over my badge and cancelling my hotel. Um, but yeah. But once I saw that publishers, big publishers that I love going for, uh, already, uh, you know, aren't going to go. Then it's like, it's not going to be it's the same Gen Con for me. And uh, yeah, they're regulating entry to the dealer hall, the closing down the hall in the evenings. Like, there's all this stuff that's just making it sound like it's going to be a pain in the butt. So that's not worth the time and effort, and and you know, driving and all the extra money and all that stuff. I'll just save it for next year, and hopefully, I can go meet a bunch of you guys. We can have some fun. You know, that's what I was hoping for this year, but I just don't feel it would be that. They're restricting attendance, they're restricting people in areas and stuff. So I, I don't know. I don't know, you can't really hold like a gathering, you know, I, I don't want to be that guy that holds a gathering somewhere and then get we all get in trouble. <laughs> uh, Leonardo says, by the way, Rob, there's a mobile version of Elder Sign. It's pretty good. I have it. Uh, that was the first board game I bought on Android, first digital board game. And I bought that like five years ago. I just never played it. It was on sale for like 99 cents. Uh, one time and, and I bought it on, on my Android phone one time I was at work I remember but I just never played it <laughs> I was like oh for 99 cents I'll try this and just never did so I did download it the other day I just haven't played it yet but uh, maybe we'll stream it and take a look at it we'll see all right let's talk about Elder Sign let's play some Elder Sign uh, yeah see if we can figure out Elder Sign so let's set it up so the Elder Sign has its clock and this clock's going to move around in uh, denominations of three so this clock kind of every turn you take in general, it'll move, you know, to the three, the six, the nine and back to the 12. When it strikes midnight, we will be drawing cards off this crappy. Um, what's it called? A mythos deck. I don't know what the deck's called, um, but this is like kind of a mythos deck. Bad things are going to happen. It might change the turn a little bit, throw in some passive effects, you know, add some doom to the, uh, the track, uh, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, so this timer's got to keep going. Uh, another thing we got to do is choose an ancient one. And I'll show you this Doom track I'm talking about. So we'll just randomly choose uh, this one. We got Shub Nugroth. If I'm saying that right. I'm probably saying that so wrong. But anyways. The Black Goat of the Woods. All monsters have one additional task added to them. Consisting of the following. Well, that's probably not good, right? <laughs> that's going to be hard. Uh, so monsters in this game, uh, they're all in a bag here. I have them in this random bag. Again, this game doesn't come with a bag. Screw you, FFG. Uh, cheap buggers. Can't throw in like a 13 cent cloth bag in their games. I don't know what that's all about, but whatever. Uh, so these monsters, they come into play. And it's like a dice placement game where we're going to put dice to, co uh, to cover up these... Uh, little squares here, and that's how you kind of kill a monster. So we have to put a dice with a, I think it's called a terror result. And then there's like a lore result. We can put a terror or lore on here. But these monsters now have an additional, additional one of these. So I hopefully I remember that. Um, but yeah. So monsters are going to be more annoying, is what I see. Uh, the goal of the game is to get Elder Signs. That's these tokens right here. And we have to get 12 of them, and we seal away this Elder God, and he will not rise and enter our world and kill us all. If he does, we go into like some kind of boss battling mode at the end of the game, which hopefully we don't see, which most likely will die according to the rulebook. 
Uh, but we have this Doom Track here, and as we cover up spots on the Doom Track, uh, if we cover up this symbol here, that's a monster symbol. We're going to put a monster in play. This is just the regular Doom Counter symbol. Man, this guy seems like he's going to be tough. <laughs> you were hoping for Yogg Sloth? I mean, we can play that if you want. I haven't tried any of these guys except for Haster I drew the first time I played. What's the Yogg? Well, Yogg Sloth. Yogg Sloth. Uh, the key in the gate, when an investigator suffers the penalties of an other world card, that card is returned to the box and not used for the rest of the game. If the other world deck becomes depleted, Yogg Sloth awakens. I mean, we can play this guy. He doesn't seem like as ridiculous, but maybe that is ridiculous. I don't know. I said the name. Oh, I know. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> he who shall not be named. Hey, Darren. It's good. How you doing? Uh... <laughs> Falco, you're hilarious. All right. So yeah, we'll play Yogg Sothoth. I don't know. I have never played any of them except for the one that starts with H. So we'll just try this one, whatever. Since Brian S. in chat was hoping for it. So we'll do Yogg Sothoth. Uh, so we need 12 Elder Signs. Uh, these symbols here are if we get to that final showdown battle, if we don't get to 12 Elder Signs before this Doom track fills up. So you'll see as we play, we'll fill this Doom track up. If it ever completely fills, this guy awakens. We go to a mode where I need to roll results on dice to attack him, to remove Doom counters until we kill him, or until he attacks and devours and kills us. So they have like an ongoing effect. So we got to remember this. Uh, if we get any penalties from an Otherworld card, that card is returned to the box. So the Otherworld cards are like adventure cards that we will move on to. They create the board. And we'll be placing dice on these symbols to try to complete these uh, adventures. And what it's saying is if we get hit by the punishment by failing these tests, which you'll see, uh, this card will be removed from the game. And there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these cards at all. So hopefully we can win before that happens. Because if these cards run out... Uh, yeah, if the deck's depleted... So that means, I think, if it removes some from the game, because we fail them, and there's a bunch in play and the deck is empty, I think we fail at that point when the deck is, is, is empty. So we need to complete these, which normally returns them back to their deck, uh, to the bottom of their deck. So we gotta like kind of keep these under control, is what that's telling me. Uh, hopefully we can do that. <laughs> don't say their names you don't want to get their attention yeah sorry this is only the base game i only have the base game i don't care to buy expansions for this game i have no interest in that whatsoever i've only played it once but based on researching the game kind of seeing what it's about i don't need a bunch more ffg components to a light dice game that i feel like i would only play it like i might bring it out and play it with other players but it doesn't seem like the kind of game that uh any of the other players in our groups or myself would want to play more than two or three times tops. Like, I, I feel like this game is just a fun little dice game. Um, I don't need to make it more complex. Uh, my joke earlier about the tiny epic stuff, talking about the tiny components, the epic part of that joke uh, was the FAQ. So this game is a little 2.35 whatever complexity game. It's supposed to be a small, lighter dice game. And it has like a 12-page FAQ. And most of it is because of the expansions coming in and adding a bunch of, I guess, confusing things. Uh, but I was super shocked to see this game has an FAQ that's like larger than like Game of Thrones 2nd Edition. Like, I, I, it's crazy. I don't know if it really is. I just, from memory, I feel like that one isn't as bad, but... There's still a lot of stuff in that game too. But yeah, it just keeps going. Like crazy amount of questions and does how does this work? And like mind-blowing. This scares me away. Seeing this makes me never want to buy any expansions for this game. Even if about 30% of this thing covers stuff from the base game confusion. Um, but when I read it, it kind of made sense. It was fine. But the amount of questions for like things from the expansions just make me not want to play it. 
Dale's saying, for just 12 pages, that's nothing. No, for a little, like, $30 dice rolling game like this that's so not complex, uh, why? Why is that? It's just bad rule books, right? Or bad game design. I don't know what it is, but that's crazy to me. So, yeah, avoid this game if you don't, you know, if you're worried about expansions and confusion from FAQs and stuff. It's silly. Super silly. So, I, I don't want to ever own expansion for this game. I'll wait for the second edition, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah it's just silly super silly but anyways no it's just the base set don't care about expansions you'll never see them here i'm um, just having some fun with the base game trying it out and then probably throwing this game in the garbage all right there you go all right so we got our monsters in the bag we have our yog uh our yog sothoth um old one and what's next? Prepare the Monster Cup, done. Prepare adventures. So they give you quite a few adventures in the game, uh, in the base game. So there's lots of variability uh, through the random like decks, lots of random items and adventure cards and even characters. Like the base game gives you so many different characters and old ones and stuff. But the amount of times I'll ever play this game, I feel like, you know, I can play this game like, 10 plus times and still see a bunch of different stuff and I, I don't care about expansions. Even if it might make the game better. Belko, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding about throwing it out. <laughs> uh, I'm only kidding. I just mean I'm not buying expansions. <laughs> oh, you're funny. And I nailed the pronunciation on the Elder Gods' Dale. Yes, I did. For sure. Absolutely. 100%. So let's shuffle up our um, other world cards. So these don't start in play, but they could get pulled in by uh, completing adventure cards. So let's just throw out six of these cards. Okay. So these adventure cards, six of them create up the board, but more could come in play and we could get other world cards. Um, and as you complete these, you earn trophies, which is the currency of the game, which you can use now, this is the cool part, okay? This is like the only cool part of the whole game, really. Um, is you can go to a shop. So at the entrance, we're in a museum. We're in a museum. We're here at nighttime. We're trying to seal away an elder god. We're running around doing adventures and getting trophies and earning uh, common items, unique items, spells, allies, and trying to get elder signs to close it away, right? But you can return to the museum entrance. I guess they have the gift shop open overnight while you're here. Uh, and you can receive first aid, so you can kind of heal up by spending those trophies. Or you could do search lost and found, where you get to roll a green die, and based on that, you could lose some stamina or sanity, or you could gain a clue token, which is a reroll token, or a common item or a spell. Or you can buy a souvenir by spending trophies, including up to 10 trophies for an elder sign. So you can only do one of these actions when you're at the entrance on your turn, uh, but that is another place we can go. So there's adventure cards you can go on to, so there's three phases in the game. You move. So on the start of your turn, uh, you'll start like at the entrance. And then you can move to either stay at the entrance or move on any adventure card. And then you play a dice placement, push your luck kind of little mini game to try to complete the card. If you fail, if you fail, you take the punishment. So in this case, you lose some sanity. If you win in this place, I would take two unique items. Um, and I would also get this card as a trophy, which I could spend for any one of these uh, effects. So that's what's going to happen. You'll see it. I'm uh, maybe not explaining it the best, but you'll see it as we play through the game. Uh, and next, we need to pick our character, I think. Um, oh, do we have anything that's locking dice? So sometimes there's cards in play that will lock dice. I don't know if we're supposed to be drawing this card first, too. When do we draw this card? Oh, that's last. That's last. Yeah, they're called Mythos cards, which we'll see. Uh, so I prepared these decks here, the common items. We'll just shuffle them. But you guys can see. Uh, oh, new subscriber. Thank you so much for subscribing. I don't know how to say that name. Uh, but you can get items that could add dice to your pool as you're playing the little Push Your Luck Dice mini game um, from the common items. There's other things in here too, little little abilities and things. Uh, then we got unique items, which will add red dice usually, uh, but could add other dice or have other abilities. Just throw those there. Allies, which the only ally I ever saw when I played before. Oh, here he is. 
<laughs> Duke the Dog's in the ally deck, uh, but so are a bunch of others, but they all just have little abilities on them. Rob wins. He started the game insane. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jim's asking, so how fast will you become insane? We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully I can just go to the gift shop and, and buy my sanity back uh, with some trophies. We'll see, though. We'll see. Uh, and then we have spell cards, which they have abilities on some of them, but they also, the main thing is they have the ability to, like, lock a die on it for later, um, which is pretty cool. I've never had that yet. I've never gotten a spell with those on it yet in the game, so hopefully I use them correctly. But if you know how to play this game, feel free to correct me in the chat if you notice I'm doing something wrong. Bernardo's here. Greetings from my home. Dreading the late fees from not returning the Necronomicon to the Library of the Evil Dead. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, Bernardo, why were you going to the Library of the Evil Dead? And why was that the book you chose to take out? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. What are you doing over there? All right. Uh, so we prepared those decks. We got all the tokens. Like I said, all the tokens are off screen, but uh, there is quite a few of them. Okay, so we have our Doom Track tokens will go on here. Our character tokens, we'll find which character we have in a sec. The clue or the reroll tokens, which are the feet, not magnifying glasses as in every other Arkham game. And we have our sanity and our damage and the elder signs, which we're trying to collect. So these are just all off screen. Uh, yeah, so they're there. Just so you guys know what comes in the game. Um, and now we're going to, so distribute investigators. The cool part is this game, another reason why I thought it was cool to purchase it, it actually has true solo. So the game plays exactly the same Pretty much for multiple players versus solo. There's no separate solo rules section. Uh, and a game from 2011, I was kind of surprised, especially FFG. In most of their games, they kind of balance them and say, if you're playing solo, you got to use two characters. Just because they didn't feel like, you know, designing the game with solo in mind, I guess. Uh, in this game, you actually can just truly play one investigator. And the game just flows. You don't need to learn eight extra pages of rules, which I think is really great. So we're going to be playing as Harvey Walters. You can normally choose your old one, and you can, which we did, uh, or you can choose your investigator. Um, but uh, we, you can do it random also. So we're just going to do random. We'll take Harvey Walters. Uh, but there's a ton. Like, there's a ton of characters. All have different health values and sanity values, and they all have different abilities, and they all have different starting items. Uh, so like I said, you can play this game a bunch of times, and just keep choosing different investigators, playing at different player counts and stuff. I don't, I don't know. Like, do the expansions really add that much? I, like, I don't think it's worth it. But um, it just doesn't seem like a deep enough game that I would care to spend the time and effort and money in. But uh, it still seems pretty fun, based on my one play. All right. So what we're gonna do is put, uh, you know, three health on this guy or stamina, as it's called in this game, and we're gonna put like seven, whoops, seven sanity or whatever over here. And we'll just remove tokens uh, from their card. You can never have more on it than their limit. So I have a five and two and two ones here for the sanity. And I just put a three token for this. But we'll remove them and make change. They have three fives and singles are in here. Hopefully you can see those. They're just really tiny. Uh, okay. Next. Oh, we need to find Harvey's super tiny token, which I think is the one I was actually demoing with. Uh, when I was moving around the board two seconds ago. So we get Harvey's super tiny token. We'll put it on the entrance here. Okay. And that's that. And then... Uh, what else do we need to do? Determine the first player. Um, hmm, how are we going to do that? How are we going to determine first player? I don't know. If you guys have any cool ways of determining first player, let me know. Uh, in the meantime, I'll move on to the next step. Uh, we're going to resolve a Mythos card. So let's just shuffle this deck a little bit. Hello, I love cheese. Welcome to the chat. Cool username. <laughs> uh, Rally says, actually the best thing about the Unseen Forces expansion is a new shop board. Removes buying Elder Signs completely. Ah. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, I should play Rock, Paper, Scissors, says Drazzy. Oh, okay. Oh, I won. All right, I'm first. Yes. All right, sweet. Sweet, I'm first player. Awesome. And we're going to get our starting items. Yes. Oh, yeah. I forgot to show you his ability. Forgot to show you his ability. I don't even know what his ability is. Strong mind. Once per roll, during his turn, 
Harvey may change one die, showing a terror result, to a lore result. I don't know all the names of the dice faces, because they're like... Uh, let's see, we have... where is it? Where are they? Where the heck? They're not on the back! Oh, right here. We got terror, we got peril, we got lore, we got investigation results, uh, split die, moving the clock, we have losing sanity or stamina could be a result. Uh, or not a result on the die, but a symbol on the board. Um, Alright, so we get a spell. And we get a unique item. Let's see if we got anything good. Let's see if we got anything good. So the spell we got... Oh, we can store two dice. So after you roll, you have a chance to put dice on the spell to like lock them away. You can always pull them off later to like roll them in a roll, or you can just take them as the result they are and use them in, a, in an adventure. Uh, or on a card or whatever to help you out on a venture card. Well, these are tasks, right? They're tasks. Or objectives. I forget. But each line is its own task on the card. Uh, and then we have a Ruby of Relay, where we could get a red die uh, on a roll. Yeah, my dice rolling, it might be a problem here, everybody, just so you know. That's the other thing. Feel free to laugh at me and watch me get frustrated as I roll dice and not get the results I want, which is another reason why, like, I kind of didn't care for this game when I first saw it, like, in 2012. I was just like, uh, so much dice rolling. I, I don't I don't like that whole thing in games at the time. Um, yeah. Uh, some of the cards have effects on them that are in play, like this one, this At Midnight effect. So when it gets a back around to midnight, it doesn't happen on the first setup of the game. But we do start at midnight. But at midnight on this card, it says each investigator must either spend two trophies or lose one sanity and stamina. So hopefully by midnight we either have trophies or we get rid of this card and we deal with it. Uh, the other thing, there are terror effects on cards, which means if you like fail your roll and you're showing a terror result, you have to do this terror effect, which this one you immediately fail it which is a little rough. Uh, and that means we would lose two health and one stamina. Or, or sorry, two stamina, one sanity. So yeah. All right, so the game's super simple. Uh, here's the player turn. Super simple. It's one, movement. So you either move or you stay where you are at the entrance or, or on the location if you failed and you're kind of stuck there. Uh, two, resolution phase. So you start rolling dice trying to complete a card. And then when you're done that, three, go to the clock phase and just move the hand forward three hours. That's it. That's all there is to the game. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel says, we love to see you suffer due to dice results. Uh, I mean, having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's going to be lots of that here today. As long as the game has dice mitigation, which this game does, it has reroll tokens and stuff, it's fine. It's fine. All right, let's have some fun. Okay, uh, so let's draw one of these cards for setup. We found Eldritch Knowledge in a Disturbed Mind. So the top part we do right away. Add one Doom token to the Doom track, unless at least one investigator has a spell. I have a spell. I have the Dead Curse of Azathoth. Okay, so no Doom token on the track for us. But then it has like a little passive ability on the bottom. All adventure cards gain the following terror effect today, replacing any terror effect they normally have. Terror. Discard all dice showing terror results. Okay, so if we fail a roll and we have any of those terror, uh, terror tokens, we have to discard all those dice that have the terror tokens on them. And that would replace, that would replace like this terror effect, for example. So we won't fail immediately on this adventure. Th that's replaced. And that, that's is going to stay in play until we go all the way around the clock back to midnight. So basically like four turns. It might go quicker because some cards will make you move uh, the clock, you know, speed up time. Okay. So based on what's going on here, uh, I kind of want to get rid of this at midnight effect. It has an elder sign on it. I want to gather clue tokens because I feel like I need them because uh, they reroll. 
There are cards already here that give us Elder Signs, but I feel like grabbing either clues in other worlds, getting them in play for more options, or getting rid of, like, um, getting rid of this At Midnight effect. The only problem is this needs, like, all scrolls, like, so many scrolls, and uh, that's going to be tough to do. So I feel like I kind of want to go to somewhere else, get some clue tokens, maybe lock in some dice on a spell, and maybe we can build up for this card later, and we have some time. So, Path of Least Resistance, I would feel like this would be a pretty easy card to do. Because the Terror Effect, uh, it's replaced, but a Terror Effect isn't too rough. It, even normally, if you're playing to discard a trophy, if you don't have any yet, I think is fine. Um, mm. And we got to remember, I have the once per roll, I can switch a Terror Result. To a uh, lore result. Hmm. That might help us with this. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Let's. Hmm. I like, I want the cards with the most stuff on them, like this one, but this one gives us a monster. I think I'm going for this one. I think I'm going for this one. It's two, two points. Uh, if we fail, though, we get a doom. That's the only thing I'm a little scared of. Maybe I go there with the red die. And we could get another world card. Or I go to this one, but it brings a monster out. Yeah, this is tough. Okay, let's just go to this one. We'll move. So we're going to the Mysterious Tomb. Uh, then what you do is you grab all the green dice that are available in your pool. Sometimes they can be locked away on cards and monsters and stuff, so you won't have access to all the dice. Uh, and we have six dice to work with, and we're trying to cover up uh, four spots technically, but... You could, like, cover up this three spot here with, like, you know, three ones, for example. That's not as efficient. That's a little silly. Uh, but you could do that to cover up the one spot that needs three results. Or you could do, like, a two and a one. Or you can even... Uh, you, uh, you never would need to in this case, but, you know, you could go overboard if you only had... I guess two twos would be the best example for that. Um, so if I had two twos, I could cover them up, uh, cover up that three, and that's enough. But then you continue rolling, so I would have to complete uh, one task before moving on to the next. In this case, there's no arrow. I don't have any arrows in play. But there are cards with arrows on them that you have to complete them in order. But these, you can complete them in any order you want. But you can only work on one task per roll. Uh, so once you complete that task, then you grab the rest of your dice and, you know, you roll them. If you fail and you can't complete one, you have to actually discard one die and then you keep trying. Uh, but you could use clue tokens, which I have none of, to re-roll. Uh, but right now we have the chance of adding in this red die, which has some better results on it, including this wild result, uh, which we can use it to to have like a, what is it, like a four investigation, a lore, a peril, or a terror if we want. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, this does have a one deck dungeon vibe. 100% Daniel. 100% the one deck. It's a dice placement game. Same idea. You're just moving around to cards, trying to cover them up, get rewards off them. This is very much like the vibe of One Deck Dungeon. Very much so. so yeah, go tell the guy who designed One Deck Dungeon to stop ripping off Elder Sign. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Uh, so let's... Uh, I say we just go for it. We try. I just don't have any rerolls. I'm a little worried. Uh, yeah, let's just try it. I think we can add a spell in a mid mid roll. So as long as I complete a line, I don't fail my roll, so I don't have to deal with a terror effect. So I'm looking here. I have uh, I have the two lore, which here's the dice. I should have shown you guys the dice sides, but uh, so on a green die, we could get a one, two, three investigation, a lore, a peril, or a terror. On a yellow die, if we ever get to pull one of those in, it actually has a four investigation, no terror. And then the red die starts at two, three, four, lore, peril, and that wild, 
which could be for investigation, allure, apparel, or a terror for that wild. So, uh, based on what I see here, I have what I need for both. But this is a perfect example. I'm not allowed to cover up two tasks, like two rows, on the same roll. So right now I have a window where I could spend rerolls or use abilities to change results before accepting this. But obviously I've succeeded. So I, I think the more rare one is trying to get two of these lore. So uh, like there's, I, I feel with the four dice after rolling, hopefully I can get up to three investigation and I hope I see this tear. The cool part is I can lock these on this spell like this. I think I'm allowed to lock as many as I want on the two. I could be wrong though. I don't know if anyone knows, but I think you can do both. I've never had these spells before that uh, had two on them or even the one on them. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to use this spell to save these dice. So this spell has like two little dice spots on it. So you can use it there. You can also focus dice assuming you failed the roll. So if I failed the roll once per attempt, uh, I could focus and like lock a result on my character token and uh, use that later in the roll. But in this case, I don't, I, I passed unless I choose to fail this roll, which is, is silly. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to cover up this object. I'm going to store these two and that's that. So now I go, I don't have to lose a die because I didn't fail. No terror effects or anything. Uh, and then now I will just, instead of rolling, I'm just going to take these off here and place them on here. I think that's legal. Oh, I could change a result, right? Do I want to though? Like I could change this to a lore, but I don't need another lore. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Maybe I took this, maybe I take this object first and then I re-roll for the lore. No, I'll just do this and we'll spend this card. This card's gone. And uh, that's that. I know it's probably not the best to use that up like that, but I, I don't know. I just want to show, like demo to you guys, like the cool things you can do with this stuff. Uh, so we complete the card. We go back to the entrance. We put all our dice back. Uh, we replace this card. Oh, two more Elder Signs, wow. Uh, and then we get the results. So we didn't fail, we completed it. So I'm going to get a clue token that I can use for re-rolling. I feel like I want to make a pile of these things. Uh, we get an other world card in play. So we'll draw the top one of that. We'll throw one in play here. I don't know what's really different about these. I think they all come with Elder Signs maybe on, in the rewards. Maybe that's what the deal is with these cards. I don't know. Maybe they're higher trophies. I'm not sure the difference to these other than they don't get replaced. When I complete one of these, they go to the bottom of the deck. But remember, if I fail one because we're playing with Yogg's Foth uh, it will leave the game if I fail. All right, so then I also get another spell. I also get another spell. And we found an enchanted weapon. So we can store another die on there. And this, I'll save this as two trophies. So I get that to keep that that I can spend later. Uh, it will go like this. We'll just kind of keep our trophies here. So we can spend these at, at here if we choose to stay there on a turn. Uh, then we're going to move the clock. So we're at three. Uh, so Rally's saying for Harvey, Lore has a one out of three odds, Terror and Lore, while Terror is a one in six chance. Harvey can change a horror to a lore. Two and six for a lore instead of one and six. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so maybe I should have treated the other result, right? As that I could more easily complete the other one. Well, like, I feel a little more confident than if I use Harvey's ability on this card, maybe. I should have probably stored uh, a lore result to use on this on a spell. Maybe I do that going forward. Okay. Uh, so where to next? I don't need to heal or anything. I, I, I don't have a lot of trophies to buy stuff. So I feel like I just want to carry on. Um, this one will add a doom token, even if we complete it. That's a no good. 
But man, we have some nice Elder Signs here. But we need to work towards getting rid of this At Midnight effect. Hmm... Maybe I go for this one and I just use this red die in there already. I have one reroll, but like I don't trust that. I feel like I need to have a pile of them. Um, I could get a reroll from this one. Seems pretty easy, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, let's just go for this one. I don't know. What are you guys thinking? Uh, the at midnight, uh, oh, this at midnight, sorry. Yeah, this is a lose one sanity and one stamina unless we spend two trophies, which I mean I have, but it's got an elder sign on here. It's got some weapons and reroll tokens. Like I kind of want to get that anyway. And two trophies. Doesn't that actually remove a doom? Is that what that does? No, I don't think it does. Uh, this symbol just says Doom. Add one Doom token to the Doom track. I, I don't think it removes it. I feel like that symbol just does the same thing no matter where it is on a card. Oh, do they change icons? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll try this. I know three lore seems tricky. Uh, we'll probably be in trouble. Maybe we don't. Let's build up some stuff. Let's just go... Let's just go here. Let's just go here, try to get a reroll token. I don't know. Seems like a waste of a turn, but. Okay. All right, so we'll go here. Uh, we're gonna take all our green dice and we just need to get a three investigation and a six investigation and two separate things here. And maybe we can store a lore on here on the spell that we can then use later here. Uh, yep. All right, so we got a three, a two, and a one investigation, and then a couple lore. Actually, we rolled three lore. Man, we should have went here. Holy crap. I, I rolled three lore. Like, I, I would have done this no problem. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Wow. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> uh, we'll just use... Do I just try to cover the six with these three dice? Or do I just cover the three and then roll these hoping to get six total on them? That's where the pickle comes in. Quite the pickle. I think it's more efficient just to cover the three, right? And as long as you cover one, you don't have to d discard anything. We don't fail. We didn't get the, uh, the terror effect. Again, I'm a noob with this game, so I may be doing things that don't seem efficient because uh, I don't know better. And boom, there we go, a three and a three. So we got it. Oh, we did it. We did it, we did it, we did it. Yay. And we locked away one of these. Sweet. All right. So back we go. Uh, we replace the card. This is the next replacement one. That doesn't seem too bad for some clues. Yeah, maybe we do that one next. Okay, and we just get a clue token. Okay, and then we have one more trophy added to our little trophy pool. And we move the time. All right. I think we go here. Get some more clues, right? Let's farm clues. Farm the clues. All right. Uh, we're grabbing all our green dice. Don't store the lore. You crazy? Just because my ability? I just want to complete this one though. Like I think it'll be just easier if I have a lore already set. Hmm. I know it's making things harder. Like if I go here now, this is sitting here, but I might be able to use it if worst case. Um I know it's not the best use of a spell, because like we see lore results, we have a way of changing to lore. I guess I don't. 
Oh, gonna be tough with five dice available, but there's five required. Oh, on this one? And then this one, how many? One, two, three, four, at least. I'll just keep going with it. I'll try. I'll try. I'm going to do this one. Yeah, I'm going to try it. I know it's weird, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so we got a three and a lore. So we could do this one. And then we just need, what is it? Six? We need six on the other one. We're rolling three dice. And we got three. That's a fail. Unless we re-roll. Hmm. Yeah, I'll spend one re-roll. And let's just re-roll all of it, I guess. Nope. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, that was bad, maybe. All right. Uh, let's lose. This says... All adventure cards gain this. Oh, I don't have any terror effect. I'm limiting my potential rolls. I, I agree. So limiting them. Um, mm. How do we do this? That's fine, though. We can see how the fail stuff works. Uh, so I'll just get rid of a, a die. We'll say I fail that one. Now I just roll with these two. And we fail. So yeah, we'll just fail this card. That's fine. And then what happens is I... Does it... It goes away, right? Or does it stay here? I think it stays here. I stay on it, right? This is like the first time I've ever failed a card in this game. Um, so I take uh, one uh, sanity loss. And I think I just stay here, right? Is that how that works? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I stay there. We're the one that needs all the lore. Yeah, yeah, that was silly to do that. That was super silly. Okay, um, so clock, and now I move. We'll go here, and let's grab all of our dice. Uh, let's grab the red one too. I don't know. We'll grab the red one. Just try it out. Yeah, if you stay, so if you're running multiple investigators, Harvey could assist another one coming to that adventure. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, because you can help, like, lock stuff on each other's dice, right? Go to the lore room. That's this one, right? Or are you talking about this one? All right, uh, so... I have a three. I have a lore. I could lock in the bottom one. That way we don't fail and I don't have to spend rerolls right now. I have this lore here. So I just need to see two lore. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel good about it. I'm not even seeing like terror results to flip them, right? Oh, I didn't get a single lore. Uh, let's just re-roll everything. Yeah, so much for Harvey's ability that I feel like I haven't even had a chance to use yet. Because I haven't seen those results. Alright, I did get one though. I got one here that jumped off the screen. Uh, so this I can turn in, right? I can do like this. Change it with his ability. And then I got these. And then I take this one, like that, right? Boom. Yeah, I've been remembering Harvey's ability. I just haven't seen those dice results till just now, I feel like. Uh, so we completed that one. And this is gone. We spent our enchanted weapon. We have no items. Uh, 
We'll go back. We'll take this card. We'll replace it. Uh, with the loading dock. Alright, so on this one we get a clue. We get a common item. We're able to add a yellow die to the pool with a lantern. And we get our first elder sign. Yay! Uh, let's just throw the monsters out of the way. One elder sign out of the 12 we need. See if we can. Like this, I guess. I don't know. All right. And two more trophies to our pool. Okay. Now where? I want those two clues. I want those two clues. Oh, I didn't do the clock phase, right? Midnight. Ding. And this will flip a new card. We got a warning of a conspiracy. There's no immediate effect today. Of a conspiracy says all tasks that require at least one investigation result require an additional investigation result. What does that mean? Like, what's the number? All tasks that require at least one investigation result require an additional investigation result. Like, do I just need to cover up another one or it's doubling what's here? Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. I, I don't understand this one at all. So, I, I, like, this one requires an extra, or it requires at least one investigation result, right? So there's another one beside it is what I'm picturing. But what number is on that? If there is a scroll, there is two scrolls now. David's saying investigations that require three now require four. Oh, okay, so you're just adding one to the number in the square. They could have reworded that way better. That's a mess. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So this is now a four instead of a three. This one's a four. This one's a seven. This one's a nine. Whoa! Okay. Okay, and that's going to be in, a, in effect until we get all the way around back to midnight. Wow. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Any at midnight effects? No, 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 no. Okay, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? <laughs> Correct, and yes, bad time. <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. Man, I don't want to go here now. If this is a cost of four, this is a seven. That seems a little tough. I could go here that doesn't need any of them. And we can see our first monster. This one would only be a four and then two skulls. That's not too bad, right? I don't know. Let's, let's just go here. Let's go to the koi pond. I don't know. Top right could be doable with yellow die added. Maybe go buy a clue token first. I have one clue token. You, yeah, we could. Clue tokens cost one trophy. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to try this one with the yellow die. I'm going to go to the koi pond. I'm going to go to the koi pond. We'll throw away the lantern. I know it may be overkill, but uh, let's try. And we immediately fail the adventure uh, if we fail. 
or if we have a terror result that we're not like spending. But remember, I can change one, right? Once per roll. Okay, uh, no terror results at all. Hmm. Mm, I got one skull. I could I could store that. But I think I'm just gonna clue and re-roll all my card or all my dice. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna turn one of these to us a lore. And then I'll take these two skulls and this error and throw it on there. I think that's the play, right? And then now I'm just trying to get one terror result. No terror results. And this one doesn't have a terror on it, right? So that was probably dumb to add the yellow die. Oh, it has a skull still. Yeah, that was probably dumb, right? <laughs> uh, so let's just remove the yellow die. <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. All right, let's roll. Looking for a terror. Nothing. Get rid of this. Looking for a terror. Yes, we got it. All right. A winner is us. All right. Get rid of that. Back here. Get a new card. Oh, we got another at midnight. Add two doom tokens to the doom track. That's a bad one. Oh, we need to get rid of this ace sap. Okay, let's get some rewards. We get a monster. Yay, we get a monster. So we draw a random monster from the bag. And we can choose uh, where it goes. Let's see what we get. Uh, we got a one trophy zombie. Uh, which he will just cover up. Uh, so basically how these work is they cover up one of these like white bordered spots. So I can choose any card with a white border on it and just cover it up with this. So this result just means I can cover this either up with a terror or a peril. Uh, no problem. So yeah. Um, so my option is putting it here, which makes that card easier. Or I put it here, means less scrolls. I think I'll throw it here. I don't know. But then again, I don't want to add Doom to the Doom track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. We'll throw it there for now. And then uh, the clock, Jim, the clock phase isn't done until I'm finished resolving this step. So I I'll do the clock when I get there. Uh, don't put pressure on me with the time. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so we got the monster. Uh, now we're going to get a clue token. And then we're going to get a common item. Let's see what we get. Oh, we found a lucky cigarette case. Yeah, that could add a yellow die. And then we get another Elder Sign. Yay! And more to go. Woo! All right. So this goes away. Oh, no. Sorry. This goes here. Now we have uh, seven trophies. Hmm. Seven trophies, eh? Okay. Uh, what else? Time. All right. We got there. I, I assume so. It's it's this symbol, right? A monster appears. I don't know. Am I wrong? Does that defeat a monster? Like, I, I, I think they would use a different symbol, no? I feel like they would use a different symbol. I don't know. Let me check the rule book, I guess. I, I don't know. I guess I just had the rule book in hand. I don't think it goes into those details uh, in here. But where is adventure cards? Rewards and penalties. So, oh yeah, we can bring it up on here. Rewards and penalties, that's page nine.
The rewards and penalties. If the player successfully resolves an adventure card, he receives a reward shown in the lower right area of the card. If they fail, you get the bottom left. Example, example. So if we look, there's a monster here. This is the exact one we just did. And if we scroll down to monster, it says for each of these icons, a monster appears. And it's like straightforward right under rewards and penalties. Yeah, you think it would like defeat a monster, but I feel like it's just a balance thing. So even if you're like having the most lucky rolls in the game and you're getting all the cards complete, it's still going to throw monsters at you. It's still going to throw doom at you because it's like balancing the card, right? The card might have amazing rewards, amazing trophy points, and it might be maybe even easier to do. But the downside of doing that card is even if you succeed, you'll see a monster, you'll see a doom. Otherwise, the game might get pretty boring and easy if you're just like lucky at dice rolls or you're using your reroll tokens correctly. I don't know. Or your abilities. But I think that's how it works. Based on everything I read, there was nothing about... There is cards, items that defeat monsters, but they say it in text. They don't have a symbol. Sean's saying there's a separate symbol for defeating a monster. I believe that's probably in expansions, right? In this one, it just says it. Uh, what is the other world's card's name? The other world card right here is the Great Hall of Seleno. Great Hall of Seleno, I think, is what, or Jeleno, Seleno, Seleno. I don't know. And the other card we just did was Koi Pond. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, monsters in the game, yeah, they do give you trophies when you defeat them. So it, it's not a bad thing for them to come in sometimes. Sometimes they make a card easier, in my opinion, and you get more trophies out of it. Sometimes they're freaking annoying. Uh, all right. Did I do everything on that turn? I think so, right? New turn. Mm hmm. I mean, we can go here and try to get rid of this. Uh, we wouldn't die if we took the damage. But this has a positive. This is easier because we're not, not getting punished from the investigation results getting increased. And it's two on the trophies, which we might spend some of that to heal back up anyway. Uh, so we might need the trophy points. I don't know. And I want to not have two Doom added to the Doom track. Uh, I, I, I am playing with the revised printing, if that matters. Like, I literally just bought this game, like, brand new, like, two weeks ago. That was, like, out of stock. I'm assuming it's, like, the latest printing. But Raleigh is saying, so the revised base game, or Unseen Forces, provides a correct version with Remove Doom rather than Add Doom. Oh, yeah, if they change it up in expansion, that's different, right? It's it's a different in there. I, I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. But yeah, I'm just going to play it how the base rules say to play it. So not corrected in this revised game. Is it a correction or it's just a change in how the game works? That's weird. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, the game's a mess. That's great. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we'll play it on hard mode then, uh, where all the all the icons are bad for us. I'll, I'll have to. I'll, I'll discard cards if I if I get rewards. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Uh, so we're going here. Let's grab all our green dice. Uh, I'm not going to throw the yellow in. All right, so we got a skull and a lore. Boom, boom. Done. Now we need a terror and apparel. We have a terror. Hmm. 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 I guess I'll focus that. 
And then I'll toss away one. There's no terror effect on here, so we don't get punished, right? Now we just need a skull. Show us a skull. Nope. Reroll. Nope. Uh-oh. Yes! We did it. We'll take this focus die and the skull, and a winner is us. Boom. Flip a new card. All right, so this one gets us an Elder Sign, number three, and a unique item, which, surprise, it's adding a red die. Nameless Cults. On uh, two more trophy points. Block. All right, this one's juicy. Adds a monster, gets us a clue token, reveals another other world card, but gets us an Elder Sign also. Mm hmm. Oh, using the clue before focusing. Hmm, that's a good one. But then I worried I was just gonna roll out of that result. So I figured, like, I have the result. Why not? But yeah, then I would have, I could have possibly passed, right, by re-rolling all of it. Yeah, that's probably a better play. You're probably right. You're probably right, Rally. But I mean, it's like luck based, right? So a re-roll could have just rolled into a bunch of nothing. And then I still have to toss a die, and I have no result to focus. That was my logic, but again, you're probably right. You're probably right. Oh, and in Unseen Forces, it corrected other world cards. That's crazy that they're still printing a game full of, like, errors in 2021 that was made 10 years ago. Like, they have the power to change, like, PDF files and send them to the printers. Like, that's crazy. It's so stupid. So stupid. Uh, it's just like lazy. Doesn't the clue let you choose which dice to reroll? Yes. Yes. So I could have I could have kept the result. Yes, you're right, Bob. I could have kept the one result I liked and rerolled the rest. You're correct. You're correct. I forgot about that. You are correct. Thank you. Yeah, you don't have to reroll everything. You could just select what you want to reroll. Forgot about that. Forgot about that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, okay, thank you guys. I forget some of these things. Again, I've only played this game once. I just got it, you know, just started playing it a couple days ago. So, uh, but I do appreciate the help. All right, let's continue on. Um, this would be a seven to complete, and I need two of these lures. I feel like I could do this one. Man, it has a lot of good stuff on it too. Just not the monster. Um, every single card except for this one is gaining this, adding a, a result. But I, I just don't know about getting two tear results and two peril. And then if you do complete those, you have to lose a sanity. But I could add these two dice. It's just they both don't have tear results, right? But one has a wild. Hmm. I mean, a red die should equal more points. So I could try to attempt one of these ones. Like this one, two Elder Signs. Like, that seems huge. And I need a nine and two Skulls. But I have no reroll tokens. I have no clues. So I may just stay here and spend some trophies. But I am one point away from buying an Elder Sign. But I think I should just spend one to get a clue. Yeah, let's just do that. I'll just stay at the entrance. And just to show you guys uh, what I'm doing here is I'm choosing to stay at the entrance for the turn and buy one and only one souvenir. And on there, I'm going to spend one trophy to gain a clue token. Um, so I'll put that trophy, I'll spend it, it goes on the bottom of the deck, I'll get my clue token, and then the clock still keeps on ticking, and that's my turn. Right? How much is a spell to buy? Uh, a spell is four. You think that'd be a better play than just a reroll? The only thing is I like saving up till I get 10 of these just to get Elder Signs. I feel like it's a part of the game you need to kind of do to 
just get ahead to be quicker and you can cut it off. Um, but I mean, I'll, I'll try different things. I, I don't normally do that. Yeah, it's only four to buy a spell. Like, I do like the idea of storing dice. I think it's really cool. But, yeah, okay. We'll, uh, we'll just roll with that, I guess. Alright, now... Hmm... I think I'll go for this one. And we'll throw in the red. Throw in the red die. All right, what do we get? <laughs> now we got lots of terror. I remember we can change one to a lore, but we don't, it won't really change anything. There's no fail effect on here. No terror effect, I should say. Uh, we did roll six, seven, but we need nine up here. I feel like this is a re-roll everything except for like these two threes. Yeah, let's re-roll. Although I really want to see the skulls, so I might just re-roll everything. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, let's re-roll. Uh, let's re-roll everything. I feel like we want the skulls first, but I don't know. We didn't get any. Oh, we got the wild, though. But still, uh, that sucks. So this could be four, and we need nine. So we could just do like this. And we got the eight. Now we need two skulls. Uh, add yellow? Can I do that now? Mid thing? I, I didn't know you could do that, but I will do that. Alright, we'll add the yellow. Like, I don't want to fail. It's like doom and sanity, but, I mean, if we do, we do. I have a skull. I can use my ability to flip this, but there's no terror. So I'll just store this, and get rid of one, and keep rolling for skulls. It's before any roll. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know if it was only at the start of like your the whole roll, like when you first begin. No skull. No skull. Yeah, I think I'm going to fail the card. No, I'm not! Oh, the dice gods. Thank you. Thank you, dice gods. All right. I feel like I'm spending a lot to do that, though. Oh, like, so many resources. All right. So, replace the card. Whoa. Writing on the wall. Okay, so we get two Elder Signs. We're at five out of 12. Two more trophies. Hmm. I feel like I need more items and stuff. Walk's gonna hit midnight. All right, add one Doom Token to the Doom Track unless all investigators have two or more stamina. I do. And there's no lingering effect today. Amid the stillness. So, we still haven't added a single Doom on here. I don't know how I'm getting lucky on that, but sure. Sure. And Bob says, and that's what Elder Sign is all about. Clutch, last dice, success. Yeah, this feels like, I, I, this is weird. When I played the last time, I had like my Elder Signs and Doom Tokens were like equal. Like I would get one and then I would see something would give me a doom token or I'd fail, you know, not fail, but uh, I would get like this. I would go get greedy and go for one of these results or something. Uh, or this would be adding doom. There was also one, like I think a terror effect. Uh, yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah, this, this got me before. Add one doom token to the doom track uh, when you like 
fail at, at an attempt and you have one of these terrors showing, which I don't think we've had to happen yet. But that one's a risky one. That's why I'm avoiding that one, but. So, we have enough to buy another Elder Sign, but I'm okay. We're leaving it. Because what I like to use, I like to have some for shopping uh, and healing. So, once we get more, like, a four trophies can heal us fully up on Sanity and Stamina. Two will get us up one in one of the stats. So, as long as I have, like, the extra two or four, I feel good. So, let's just keep going. Uh, and no longer these are increased. So this is only a six now. Like, maybe I go for this. I need, like, reroll tokens. Like, should I go for this again? I think I go for this one. I need clues. I don't know. Okay, yes, you're right. You're right. Don't start talking about lack of doom, she says. The elder gods will hear and punish you. That is correct. That is correct. All right, I'm going to the missing records. Doesn't the new card need a monster? Where? Where, where, where? Did I get one that had a monster on it? No, it was just two Elder Signs. Top left for yellow item, pretty easy-ish. Uh, this one? Yeah, those skulls scare me away though, but... <laughs> Brian S is saying, in fact, you can hardly notice the edits. Pretty well seamless transitions from, oh, I need a skull to, got it, smiley face emoji. <laughs> My live, like, I just insert the I got what I need roll. <laughs> this is all filmed live, everybody. This is a live stream, no editing. <laughs> Oh man, right bottom here. This is only a scroll, apparel, and five investigation. I mean, that's good too. Writing on the wall. I like the two ter I like the two trophies on this one, but again, I don't have re rolls, so I'm scared. But Monster bottom right. Oh, you think a monster comes out on here? Is that what happens? Oh, it does, right? Because of this symbol? Ah, okay, okay. I see. I see. They don't all have that though, right? Yeah, I see. I didn't realize that symbol was in there. I getcha, I getcha. I don't know if I've seen one of those before, actually. On a card like that. Uh, so, oh, look what we got. We drew ourselves a, what the heck, a Dark Young for two trophy points. Yeah, you know, that's annoying. Hey, that card got a lot harder. That card just got a lot harder. Okay, so we're going to ignore that card for a while. Wow, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Ah, that's a full monster task rather than a partial. Okay, okay. I didn't realize they add monsters right away. I thought it was just another place you could choose to put a monster. I get it, I get it. Okay. All right, we're going here, we're going here. We're gonna to try to get clues, I think. We might fail again, but at least the punishment is not that bad. All right, we're getting all the greens. Uh, we got two threes, we could cover the six, but we also got a three and a scroll. I feel like we cover the six. Because remember, we can turn one of these into a scroll too. Like, well, now we get all the scrolls. Yeah, we'll just roll with that, I think. Oh, it shouldn't add a monster by default? Yeah, see, I, I thought that. I never read that, but I wasn't sure. I just assume I'm playing it wrong, or you guys know, like, the errata stuff better than I do. Oh, man, let's find out. Let's find out. We can look in the book.
Monsters are on page 16. So it says, when a game effect states that a monster appears, the player randomly draws one monster marker from the monster cup. Okay. Monster tasks. A monster task is a, tax, a task that an adventurer or other world card surrounded completely or in part by a white border. When placed on a monster task, a monster marker functions as a task that the players must complete in order to resolve the adventure. There are three kinds of monster tasks. So there's empty, total, and partial. I feel like this is an empty, right? It has no requirements within the white border. A monster marker covering an empty monster task adds one additional task that the players must complete. I feel like that's an empty one, no? Yeah, look, right here, an empty. Empty, empty. Well, that's an empty. It's not a full. A full or a total. Total? What the heck? Yeah, total is, it marks, it, it has all of its requirements surrounded by the white border. Like this one. So anytime all. But then a partial is when just like one square. Like this. When one square has a white border. But the other one doesn't. You cover up just part of the task. And it adds to it. So this isn't an empty. Hmm. Oh, Rally found it for us. Uh, note, an empty monster task does not have a monster marker on, on it is disregarded when resolving the adventure card. Page 10. Is that page 10 of the FAQ? Or page 10 of the rules. Probably the FAQ, right? You. The revised rules is what you're quoting. Oh, okay. But I was just in the revised rules, no? Or is this not the revised rules? It's on FFG's website. This is a mess. What a mess. Yeah, revised printing. I don't know. Or was it that note that I missed there? Yeah, no monster appears, right? It only gets one of his spawns. Okay. Yeah, Sean, it's not overthinking it. It's just, uh, yeah, some people are saying I need to put a monster, and then now I'm being told not, so it's just... Yeah, just trying to get to the bottom of it. Not overthinking it. But, yeah. I just, uh... Yeah, taking too long on a rules lookup is what I'm really doing. <laughs> yeah, okay. So no monster, no monster. Yeah, okay, so I played it right before, because I, I don't think I ever noticed that, but it is confusing because it does have this symbol on it, right? And, and in the game, this symbol is tells you a monster appears. So it's kind of kind of weird, right? Like, why, why use that symbol for that same thing? I don't know. Like, definitely this game needs a streamlining for sure, if they ever, you know, reprint the Elder Sign version. This is a mess. Okay, so I don't remember what I was doing. I think I was like re-rolling. Or rolling my next one. What's in the text box on the card? I don't know which card. All right, what do we get? Uh, okay, so we can use Harvey Walter's ability to change this terror to a lore. 
And then we'll take two of these twos, which is more than enough to cover the three, investigation, and we're rolling. We'll go back to the entrance, get rid of this, replace the card, gain our goodies, two clue tokens. Boom, boom. And one more trophy point, clock. All right, now where? Hmm, this one looks interesting. A little bit of sanity loss, though, for it. We're going to try to get an item from this one. Yeah, let's try to get an item from this one. So let's get all of our green dice. A card. Uh, this card. All right. Uh, the writing on the wall. The writing on the wall. Okay. Uh, no skulls. Oh, that's bad. That is a bad. I could focus the three, but like I'm not worried about that. Well, let's just spend a clue token and reroll all of it. All of it. Yeah, no monster spawn. No monster spawn. All right, we got one skull and no threes now. So we're going to plop that on there and we're going to roll, try to get a skull and three investigations. All right, with three skulls and we definitely got enough for investigation. So there we go. Boom. That was pretty cool. All right, back here, we got ourselves a gun, and what do we get? Oh, we got some whiskey instead. Discard this card instead of losing one sanity. <laughs> Not the item I wanted, uh, sure. All right, some more trophies. Okay, so trophy-wise, we're sitting at 12. I think I'm at that point where I want to buy an Elder Sign. Lock. All right. We're gonna stay here, I think. Unless we just buy some cool cards. I feel like buying the cards is huge. You think I forgot the terror effect? But ter terror only terror only happens when I fail a roll. And I have the terror symbol, right? So if I choose to fail the roll, I chose to spend a, a re-roll and I re-rolled everything. And as long as I can complete one line on the card, I did not fail my roll, right? Uh, but yeah. Yeah, so I never failed a roll there. I, on this that card that was there right uh which was yeah this loading dock yeah yeah right okay i know this game like gets a little confusing e even though it's like just a simple dice game uh you think but it's like a little more meat to it than that <laughs> David says, oh, I think you do. Let me check the rules. Rally? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Bob, Bob says, I'm also right. And now he must go wash his mouth out with soap. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stay here. Uh, I don't think we need to buy an Elder Sign yet but i'm thinking of buying other stuff like even get a uh, some items or we just go somewhere to get us items i don't know no i'm gonna keep pushing it i'm gonna keep pushing it i think yeah 
Let's not dilly dally. Let's go here. We're going to go to the riot in the streets. Uh, which is this one has an arrow on it. This one has an arrow on it. Uh, so we have to go down in the card. So you got to get a three first or like three worth of it. Then we go to nine. I think we try that one. That one doesn't seem too bad, but it probably really is. <laughs> guys are funny. All right. Uh, yeah, let's try this one. I don't know. It might be too much. We're only rolling six dice, and that takes at least four dice, all having threes. Ugh. I do have one reroll token, and I have to get a three first. Should I instead just stay at the entryway and add like a red die to this first? Probably. Probably. Yeah, let's do that. Let's stay here at the entryway. Uh, and then we are going to spend... A unique item is three trophies. Let's do that. Let's put back on the bottom of the deck a couple cards here. And hopefully we can get a red die off this. Yep. We grab a unique item. The king in yellow. We found the play. The script to the king in yellow. Okay. Now we're down to nine. Nine trophies. See that. Let's do it like this. Let's put our little clues up here. There we go. All right, time is the ticking. Okay, now let's go here. Uh, and let's pull in the red die. Hopefully help us get some bigger numbers. Oh, mask, no. <laughs> Oh, right in the streets. I get it. <laughs> I get it. All right. Let's see what we got. So we got a three. Uh, oh, we got a three on our red die. Mm. Mm. I mean, that's not the way I wanted it to roll, but we're going to go with it. Now we got to get nine with six green die. Well, we got one. Uh, that's not enough. We're going to clue token the whole a lot of it. Uh, three. We got seven. Ooh. And we fail. This is a fail. And we would lose a stamina. And there is nothing. Oh, we can use Harvey's ability, right? But we still fail. So let's focus a three. No tear effect. I changed it. I changed it using Harvey's ability. Take that. Take that tear effect. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to lock in that. Even though I failed the roll, I got to lose a die. Okay. Focus. I focus this die. So hopefully we see six worth of investigation. We did. Two, two, two. And a terror. But again, we didn't fail the roll because we can take this focus. And if my math is correct, six plus three, that's a nine. And I just move the dice. Boom. Back here. Uh, Elder sign. Elder sign number six. Uh, we get a unique item. We found Flute of the Outer Gods. After rolling, discard to defeat one monster. See, they have the words just defeat one monster. There's no symbol for it in this game. So this is why I think like they very intentionally put those symbols on those cards. Uh, and then we get a common item. RV laughs at the face of terror. Yes. Ooh. 45 automatic. All right. And we get two points here. Let's flip this. Oh, another clue token one here. Administration office. And we're going to go to midnight. Oh, no. New card. Any at midnight effects? Nope. Too high a price. 
to bring forth horrors. Either add one Doom token to the Doom track, or one investigator with four or more stamina loses three stamina. Uh, I only have three stamina, so I can't even choose that. I'm just going to put the Doom on, obviously. Boom. One Doom counter. All right. And it says, the next time the clock strikes midnight, a monster appears. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. Hmm. I want to go for this one. I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab all our green dice. Uh, it's a six and two scrolls. We think I need the yellow die for this. I feel like I don't, because I have Harvey's ability. But I feel like I'm going to do it anyway. I don't want to take two damage if possible. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm using Harvey's ability in the yellow die to make two scrolls, right? I feel like that's the play there. And then I need to get six investigation on five green dice. Oh, is that a good rule of thumb, Bob? Is if it's for an elder sign, use the yellow? What I was doing the first time I played, I was trying to save all the red and yellow cards. I was like building up a wall of them and only using them on these cards because I thought these cards were like a bigger deal. And in my first time I played, I barely saw any Elder Signs on Adventure cards, and they only were on these cards. So I kept, like, I kept trying to uh, get these Outworld symbols, Outer World symbols, and, and, like, trying to get them into play as much as possible. But this game, uh, on this shuffle, we see, like, Elder Signs are all over the place on the Adventure cards. I don't even care about these. It's very weird. Uh, yeah, you discard items when they're used. Did I not do that? Yeah, anytime you use it. So when you when you spend dice off of a spell, it's gone. Uh, so what do we need? Six investigation. Uh, what do we get there? Where is it? Where is it? A two. That's not six. Hmm. All right. Let's focus the two. I don't know. I think. Mm, one short. One short. Got a three. One short. Wow. All right. <laughs> well, it's now impossible to do. I should not have locked that two in there. That was silly. And I roll a three. Yeah. So we fail the card. Boom. That was bad. Very, very bad. Uh, we'll go back here. We take, lose two stamina, go down to one out of three. Uh, the clock goes. Oh, I guess we stay here, right? Yeah, we stay there. Uh, but then on the move phase, we'll go back to the entrance. Uh, and we're going to spend two trophies. And we'll go back to our full stamina. Or, yeah, full stamina. Be safe. And the clock will tick. Mm. Mm. Oh, you can focus a new die? Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you're stuck with what you have. Does the other die come back to the pool, though? Oh, that's so bad. I would have stored that one three. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any clues. I don't have any clues. Uh, so, yeah. I know. I, I'm not sure. Pontus doesn't think you can either. Yeah, let's see if we can find that. Focusing. I don't know. Hmm. 
Yes, I haven't any clues. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's like, yeah, page 10, page 10, you know? Okay. Just like being focusing. Uh, after a failed roll, the player may focus one die. To focus a die, the player first discards one die due to the failed roll, then he selects one die from the remaining dice pool without changing its result and places it on its own investigator marker. A focus die is not part of the dice pool, but the player may use its results to satisfy a task requirement on a later roll this turn. If you use a focus die to complete a task, he removes it from his investigator marker and assigns it to the task he wishes to satisfy, as long, or along with any other rolled dice he must assign to the task. At the end of the resolution phase, a return them all. Note, a player can focus a die only after a failed roll. Can, and he can focus only once during each of his turns. So that's a no. You can't replace it. You can't replace it if you're only allowed to focus once a turn. Yeah, that's right. That, that tells me no, right? Because if I already focused on that turn, uh, this is telling me I can't focus twice. So how would I be able to replace it, right? Unless I'm missing, there's something else here. But yeah, no, I think you can only focus or uh, secure a die uh, on another player, like, at once. Hmm. no. So this right here. This doesn't even mention dice. This just says, and he can focus only once during each of his turns, not rolls. So your turn literally starts at the move phase to the clock phase. So from the move phase to the clock phase, you can only focus once. Yeah. And I think I read it in the FAQ, but... So... Right here. Here's your answer. So on the top left, can an investigator focus again? So this is from FAQ 2.0 on page 10. Uh, top left, can an investigator focus again during the same resolution phase if they have used the previously focused die? No, an investigator may only focus once for resolution phase. Mm, doesn't fully answer, but can an investigator both focus and request assistance on the same roll? No, an investigator can either focus or request assistance on the same roll, not both. Yeah. But just saying this whole line here, an investigator may only focus once per resolution phase. So the act of putting a die on your token is focusing, right? Yeah. So per resolution, right? I don't know. I think so, like, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> the game got harder for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And the wording on page 10 in both page 10s is clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, where were we? New turn? Are we on a new turn? Do we move our clock and everything? I think so, right? Um, I need some more goodies. I'm going to go to the administration office. Let's go there. Get all of our green dice. Try to get some clues. All right, what do we got? Uh, we need a nine or a scroll. Uh, 
I don't have nine, but I have a scroll. All right, let's go. Wow, not even close. Um, we fail, but there's no terror effect on here. Okay. Oh, sorry, I could have locked a three, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Focus a three. First and only focus. <laughs> of my turn. No. Oh, no. I need two threes, right? This is impossible. I don't even know why I try these ones with nines. I'm being silly. Yeah. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, we don't have enough. Fail. But the fail is okay. Because we'll lose uh, sanity. And we'll still get a clue. So it wasn't all lost. Actually, we stay here. All right. So I am going to move back to here. And I'm going to purchase. What do we want to purchase? An ally's worth five trophies. Let's spend three for a unique item. Let's spend three trophies for a unique item. Yeah, not a red die. What's this? After rolling, discard to change one die to a lore result. Blue Watcher of the Pyramid. Okay, now we're going to hit midnight. Uh, at midnight, a monster appears. Whoops. I just picked the bag up on the wrong side. Yeah, I really need a red or yellow die for the nine, yeah. I just saw that I still get a clue if I lose, so I thought, like, whatever. I still have, like, I had plenty of, um, sanity. I guess I could just get rid of the whiskey, but whatever. Okay, uh... Oh, wow, that's a toughie. You guys were two. Yeah, a vampire. Uh, monster appears. I don't know, I feel like I'm never going to this card, so I, I don't know. Okay. So at midnight. No at midnight effects in play. A monster appears, and then it says, in the lurking shadows, the next time the clock strikes midnight, all investigators lose two, lose two sanity. So another monster. This one goes here. <laughs> oh, man. A dice rolling Cthulhu game? What could go wrong? Exactly, Spencer. One with horrible rules. Horrible rules. Lots can go wrong. Already finding people in the chat who've played this, like, many, many times have been playing wrong. And, and lots of rules disagreements. And there's supposedly, like, tons of corrections and expansions that break things. And... 12 page FAQ, a revised rule book that's still supposedly wrong. Yeah, fun times all around. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got here. There was a funny one. Elko saying, Rob play, playing too many bones like a champ, defeated by Elder Sign. Hey, I'm not defeated. I, I'm feeling defeated by the quality of the game. That's for sure. But uh, not by the game itself yet. I feel we're doing good. I feel we're doing good. Hmm. I feel like we stay and just buy, or? I don't know. Let's go here. Terrible discovery. Sounds safe. I feel like we could achieve this one, maybe. It'll get us some clues, Elder Sign. We'll lose some sanity, but we can go heal. Sanity when we need to. And if we're going to lose some at midnight anyway, maybe we can just spend two trophies and go back to full. Yeah, let's go here. We'll grab all our green dice. So we need a three and a terror and lose a sanity to achieve one or two scrolls and lose a sanity. I feel like we should be able to do this one. Oh, 
Whoops. Uh, so what do we get? We got a three and a terror. Yeah, that'll work. And we lose the sanity. Going down to four. Okay. Now we need two scrolls. Or lore, or whatever they're called. Oh, I can use this to change one to a lore if needed. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I'll use Harvey's ability. Uh, I could change one to a lore, right? Hmm. I could just focus that, lose a die. Yeah, let's do that. Maybe I don't have to waste this yet. Uh, there's no terror effect, so don't worry. We'll lose a die. Then we'll roll these. We're just hoping for a scroll. If we get down to the last die, I can use my Blue Watcher of Pyramid to change it. No. Oh, once per roll. No, I, this is still part of the same thing, right? No. Nope. Okay, so we'll use the Blue Watcher. And we'll change the result to a scroll. Boom. And we lose the sanity. Boom. Down to three. We achieve the card. Let's go back. Take this. Replace it. The security office. Two, three, six investigation all in a row. Um, let's move the clock. What's the other unique item do? It's just after rolling you defeat a monster. So this will help us with like these kind of cards, right? I think you can just flip over the monster on the card. Like on any card, I could just flip over a monster and then, but I still have to complete the card to get the monster, right? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So on this card, we're going to get two clues. Beautiful. And an Elder Sign. Yay! We're at 7 out of 12 we need. And we get two more points. Okay. Move the clock already. No, I think, I think when you defeat a monster, uh, if it's not on the card you're on, you just flip it. And I think it stays there, and you actually have to complete the card to get the monster, I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Rally? <laughs> just like if you do a location and fail but kill a monster that part I know that's different yeah if I'm on the location and I've covered up the monster and I still fail I still complete the monster and I get the points for that but I think that defeating a monster I think it's an FAQ I read something about like I could be wrong though but I thought you can defeat a monster But again, I don't know, but it's all good. Oh, you get the monster? Okay, perfect. Hmm. Okay. So do we want to just defeat a monster then? Is that what you're saying? We should just kill one off of another card? Or should we save it and use it when we're on a card we need to, right? Kind of weird that you can just use it to defeat a monster anywhere. That seems weird, but. I mean, let's go here. Well, let's use it, I guess. I don't know. All right. So we need a uh, scroll, a skull, and five investigation. Hmm. We have the five investigation, we do. So let's use Harvey's ability. Uh, we'll change this to a scroll. And oh, after rolling, we'll get rid of this to defeat a monster. Boom, defeated. Okay, this guy's worth two. Okay, and then we can cover skull, scroll, and we got five investigation, done. Boom. Replace, rewards, spell. Okay, we have a with a spell. 
an other world card or outer world card. The Dreamlands. Some clues and another sign. That one looks easy. That one looks easy. Let's go do that one. Yes, yes. Common item. We found a shotgun. After rolling, discard to change one die result to a skull. Okay, that's nice. And we have a monster appears. Oh no. Okay, now we get in one of those weird situations where there's nowhere to put a monster. So we can put a monster at the bottom of a card. What the heck is this? An elder thing. We found an elder thing. Okay, this guy. Seven. We would have to advance the clock and need a scroll to complete this guy. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Where do I not care to go ever? Right here. We'll just put that... <laughs> we'll make this card unbeatable, basically, and we'll just throw that at the bottom, right? I think that's how that works. I've never had this many monsters in play and nowhere to put them. Pretty sure that's how it works. Oh, yellow die is locked. Yes, yes. The yellow die is locked now. We've pro finally... Yeah, we haven't seen any of those yet. Uh, but it has the locked die result. So we have to complete this one to get that die back. So we never can pull in a yellow die. Thankfully, I don't have a yellow die uh, item right now to use. Because that would be nerfed. But uh, yeah, that's not good. I mean, we should be able to get that one back too. That card doesn't look too bad. Uh, but let's go here. Let's go. Oh, we got to do the time. Let's go here. Uh, so, take all our green dice. Skull, scroll, and a three. Uh, which we got. Boom. Okay, done. Easy peasy. Go back home. I'll advance the clock so I don't forget. Uh, two clues and an elder sign. Elder sign number eight. And two more trophy points. Uh, and that doesn't get replaced because it was on Outer World card. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Fourteen trophy points. Okay. Let's go get our die back, right? Go here. The Gala in the Great Hall. Uh, we need a two, a scroll, a skull, and then a three, and we lose the sanity. If we fail, we get a doom token. We're not going to fail. We got clue. This is what I like to see, like five clues sitting in a pile. Most of ever has like eight clues I gathered up one time that I didn't need to keep. I got like easy cards to keep getting them. And then I just like, but I did spend them all on like two cards, uh, which was <laughs> crazy. But all right, here we go. Here we go. Let's see what we get. Okay, so, wow. Mm, we could change one to a scroll and complete the top, but what we're going to do, oh, we don't have the doom. Oh, we have a way to do the doom. Okay, so what we're going to do is just put a three here, lose the sanity, go down to two. Okay, that one's complete. Uh, now we're going to try to get a... Two investigation, a scroll, and a skull. I don't know why I keep not using this whiskey, but it's fine. I'll save it for later. <laughs> uh, so, we could change one of these to a scroll and the shotgun. Mm, there's no terror effect. We can use Harvey's ability, change one of these to a scroll, and we could focus it. Then we lose a die for failing, and then we try again. And we have a skull, but we don't have the investigation we need. Hmm. Well, that's bad. Yeah, I think I messed this up. Oh, I forgot to reroll. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. 
Yeah, let's just reroll. Uh, what I say? We have the skull, right? Yeah, let's keep the skull and we'll reroll. I forgot about my clues. There we go. There we go. We got it. We got it. I forgot all about all my reroll tokens. Yeah, there we go. All right. Boom. Did it. So we unlock the yellow die. This goes away. We go home. Uh, we'll do the midnight in a sec. Uh, two more clues. A spell. Okay, we got a flesh ward. We gotta start using these spells. Uh, and an elder sign. Yay! Nine? Nine elder signs? Two more trophies. Haunted by a shadowy figure. Okay, midnight. Uh, oh no! Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's where I drink the whiskey. This is what I want. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so this one says, <laughs> I like, wait a second, did I not plan this right? Uh, the next time the clock strikes midnight, all investigators lose two sanity. I lose one. And then I'm going to drink some whiskey instead of losing the other sanity. Why not get drunk at midnight here? All right, we're hanging out in a museum. Okay. No other at midnight effects that I see. All right, so let's draw this one. Hopefully it doesn't kill us. Either add a Doom token to Doom Track, or the investigators as a group must discard two spells. Uh, we can add a Doom. We can add a Doom, that's fine. The next Doom will add a monster, though. Okay, the next time the clock strikes midnight, discard all other world cards from play and do not replace them. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're going to stay here for this turn. Uh, and we're going to spend uh, two trophies... We'll spend two trophies um, to get all of our sanity back. Back up to seven. Boom, boom. Clock goes. Yep. All right. So now we're going to, I think I'm going for this one. That'll get us two. I need two terror and two skulls. I have a way to get one skull. Or do I, and I have rerolls. I have so many rerolls. Yeah, yeah, let's just go this one. Let's try to end this thing. This will add one doom to the doom track though if we fail. That's why I've been avoiding that one. It's a little scary, but I think with all these clues, we should be good. I also have spells to store dice. And that will put us to 10, 11. Then we can just buy the last one. Yeah, yeah. Let's just get this over with. Get me out of here. All right. Uh, so let's go here. Please do not touch the exhibits. <laughs> Look at this card. The horrified expression on the thief's corpse was made all the more ghastly by his blue-tinged skin. <laughs> Uh, bottom left plus buy ES equals win. Yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do. Exactly rally. That's what I'm thinking. I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 trophy points. I could even just stay here and buy something else to help me with this, but I think we're okay. Hopefully with all the rerolls, we're good. Do bottom right. That's super easy. That is a super easy one. I thought of that one. But... It won't give me enough to buy my second Elder Sign. And nothing anticlimactic like buying your way out of a game with a win using uh, resources. <laughs> All right. Whoops. Uh, let's just go for it. This is funnier. Uh, I mean, we could be adding Doom to the Doom track, so let's not. This won't make monsters appear, which could appear right on this card, right? <laughs> Hmm. This one's also pretty easy. But it adds a doom. Let's not add doom for fun. Let's try not to make it happen. Nah, we'll do this card. Let's do this card. Let's go crazy. So we're going here. Please do not touch the exhibits. Uh, this is a cock die. Let's just reroll this one. Do investigation. 
All right, so terror, I have one, not what I need, and two skulls, I have one. But I could change one, but I could also just reroll. So let's save these two, spend a clue, and reroll the rest of these. See what we get. Oh, yeah, we got a terror. Perfect, 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 perfect. Uh, so this terror, I'll lose a sanity. Got one of the tasks done. Now we need two skulls, um, which I'll store this one on a spell, and we'll roll. Actually, yeah, we got to roll, right? We have to roll. And for fun, we'll just use the shotgun, and the shotgun will change one of these to a skull, and we'll use flesh ward, boom, and we lose one health. For fun, why not? And we go down to two out of three, flesh ward's gone and spent. Casting some spells. Uh, we complete this. We go back here. Time will tick. We get two Elder Signs. Boom, boom. We're at 11. Uh, two more trophies. Then we'll stay here. Uh, buy a souvenir. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten of our, of our 16 trophies. Uh, we will turn in. Put those on the bottom. And, you know, for a super anticlimactic ending, uh, we will go to the souvenir shop at night and we'll spend 10 trophies to buy our last Elder Sign. Boom. We have our 12. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had to use the shotgun. Like, come on. I just had to. I don't, I don't equip shotguns in games and not use them. We gotta use them. Unless I can't find them and they're stuck in my deck somewhere. Quip says, ah yes, whiskey is truly the drink of gods. For if you drink enough, you will feel like one of them. But drink too much and you will be joining them. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Way to buy yourself a victory. Yeah! He wasn't using the spell. Yeah, I kept forgetting the spells. I kept forgetting the spells a lot. Because I never, I, when I played my one game of this before, I never ever saw any of these cards that had this on it. I never even got to use them before. So I just, it takes some time getting used to it. Yep. Yeah, I was just choosing to reroll some of my dice, and then I kept the skull and the terror uh, because that's I just need a one on either one. So, yes, Raleigh, clearly Elder Sign is pay to win <laughs> for sure, for sure. So yeah, so that's Elder Sign. That's how you play. So like I said before, those who join late who've never seen this game, uh, there are many different uh, Elder ones, and if if the Doom Track filled up uh, before we got enough Elder Signs. We would clear away all the adventure cards. We'd go into like a fight mode. Uh, and we'd be like rolling dice. Trying to complete this task. To attack. Every time we complete this task. We would remove a token. Because this would be filled. And to defeat the guy. You'd have to remove all the doom tokens. And every time the clock hits midnight. Uh, they attack you. And in this case he would have. Uh, I need to either discard a trophy. Or be devoured. So I could save up trophies. If I'm having trouble. And then we get in the final fight, and then maybe I get lucky, but I don't know how many times I'd roll two scrolls and three investigation. But again, I have Harvey Walters, right? So I can change terror into that. So maybe even in the final battle, I would have been okay? But I guess it depends on where you're at. Like, I don't know. And trophies don't make change either. So if I was in that fight and I had to spend one trophy, I can't just spend a two and get one back. So even if I just came in with this, this is only having three trophies. So that would only be three midnight phases I would have to get this guy completed. And I highly doubt I'd be able to do that with just this left. But I mean, if you had more, you know. And maybe what I would do if I was playing Yogg Sothoth, I would go for more one trophies maybe. Because uh, maybe they're easier, kind of. And then you save up a bunch of singles if you feel like you're going to get in that final fight. But supposedly you don't want to fight uh, the boss. Because it says in the rule book, like, most likely you're going to die and lose. Uh, so yeah. 
So that's my second time ever playing the game, so that's why lots of rules look up some mistakes. But even it seems like people in the in the chat that own the game, some people know the rules, some people assume the rules. It's one of those games, right? Where the rules are ho horribly written, and there's a 12-page FAQ, and it's so easy to misunderstand how this game works. Because even though it seems like a simple, not-so-complex dice placement game, it's like... Man, I don't know, just some of the wording and the abilities, it can easily make you, like, mess up the rules. And I probably messed up more rules here that we didn't even catch, but... I feel like this game, I'm not going to stress about. When I bought this game, I went into it understanding it's an older game. It's from, like, 2011. It doesn't have the FFG, like, learn to play and rules reference. You know, the playtesting probably wasn't as good as it is now. Um, I assumed it would be a better printing, but supposedly there's still errors in the rulebook of the... Uh, revised printing, so I, I can only imagine how bad the not revised printing was. Uh, but I bought this game just to kind of treat it casual, have some fun with it, goof around with it. Um, I'm not trying to take it serious. I do not want to buy expansions for it. It's just a fun little game, as Bob's saying in the chat, that I would just pull out to play where we don't have like a full game night. You know, it's not too deep. Uh, the downtime is not too bad because your turn is pretty quick. You just kind of pick where you're moving. You do a little roll off. And then you move the clock and pass to the next player. And I like the idea that you can work together and go to the same location and focus dice for each other. Um, and that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, it seems fun. Nothing crazy. Uh, nothing crazy, but it's fun. But yeah. Gen Chaos is saying, Streets of Arkham really makes this game sing. I believe expansions obviously will turn it more into a gamer's game. I understand that, but I just feel like this is not the game I really want to spend ex for expansions and play with others. Like, this is kind of... I feel like this game is a little, like, embarrassing uh, compared to some of the other awesome games in my collection that I'd rather show to people and have gamers play and try to keep them in the hobby. I feel like this game is just not really exciting. Like, it has the dice rolling stuff down to the last die. Maybe we get it, maybe we don't, you know. But this game just feels like it, it falls flat, really. Like, the whole idea of the Doom track and buying Elder Sign tokens, I know you guys said the expansion removes that. But, like, why do I have to spend, like, $80 buying expansions plus this base game to make a decent dice placement game? I don't know. I just would rather spend that money buying a base set of a more complex, newer, refined, straightforward kind of, like, you know, a, a more streamlined game, maybe, if I was looking for something more casual. But this game just seems clunky and yeah not refined of course even though it's the revised printing but yeah it's fine it's fine i see why it has a 7.0 or 6.8 or whatever uh, on the review i think 7.0 which is like okay but yeah there's nothing to write home about but it's fine it's fun yeah that's my opinion some people may love this freaking game and i see why you would and I see lots of people uh, obviously bought it or else they wouldn't have released so many expansions. And I'm sure it's pretty cool, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Belko saying, I agree, Rob. If I got it for free, I would appreciate it, but would rather spend my money on some other game. Yeah, it's just like, I, I, I want to show this. It's still fun, uh, but in like 2021 now where I'm playing this 10-year-old 10, 10 game, it feels like there's just so many better even Arkham Files games that I'd rather spend my money on. Yeah, some of those games are going to be more expensive even just starting with the base set. But uh, but yeah, if you're just in a fix and you need to... This game, like what, what I really I saw from it when I first saw it at that board game store, when I saw the guys playing it, um, I just realized it was super quick to set up, it seemed. And it doesn't seem like a lot of components, like the space it takes up. So I feel like you could pack this game in like a really small container or box and it's just like a little portable game you can pull out on a lunch hour and if everyone kind of knows how to play through it quickly you can really rip through turns. Um, and it's super quick, you just pull out all the decks, shuffle them up quick and just draw your six cards, pick your investigator at random and start playing. It's like, yeah, it seems like it's pretty easy to get to the table, it doesn't take up a lot of table space and easy to like clean up like... That, it has that going for it. So if you love Arkham horror theme stuff and you just want to like have a quick, not super quick game, but like, you know, not a four hour game night, you know, uh, that's what it is. Cthulhu Yahtzee. Yeah, basically what it is. Yeah. 
It's also fun with more people. Usually play three or four. And yeah, we said that at the start of the stream, Kate. Uh, it showed that on BGG. I think it was best with four, right? Yeah, best with four. But don't get me wrong. I do love the idea that this is solo and I didn't need to learn any special rules for solo. And I can just run one character. So I could pull out this game. I can learn it by myself. And then I can easily now, not super easily, but now I, can, I feel more confident to teach other players and, and show them quickly. And, you know, you could try a few different, a few different playthroughs before you play with somebody, which is cool. Oh, uh, I got to turn that off. Uh, let's see. You don't need to vote. There's no voting on that right now. Closed. I thought I turned that off. Sorry, I just need to turn off that thing in the chat that's like telling you guys to vote. All right, done. Play it with eight? I don't think I've ever played this with eight players. That seems crazy, but it's cool that you can. That seems like something fun to do at a convention. Uh, to bring it to a convention and just play with people. But yeah, let's see. I want to see what people rate it. Yeah, not recommended <laughs> at higher than four. <laughs> Look at this. 86% uh, here. So out of 242 votes, uh, on this eight player, uh, literally 208 of those votes say, please, 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 please do not play this with eight players. <laughs> uh, that's funny. But yeah, solo, it's recommended. Like, people recommend it. Two player recommended. Three player is fine. It's just when you start getting like five player and above, people are like, no, no, no. Stay away. Stay away. Uh, but yeah. No, it's a cool game. Cool little game, for sure. Not a bad complexity to it. But again, if you're going to get stressed out with the rule book, there is an FAQ that pretty much clears up everything. But again, this is only my second playthrough, so I was still, like, just... I, I'm treating this game very casual, right? I, I was trying not to take it too serious and, like, you know, worry about it. I feel like we're going to play it today, and then we'll play it with Mel on Monday. And then I'll probably pull it out sometime in the future just to play with uh, more, like, a table of three or four players. I want to try it uh with four players or three players like like kate's saying i do want to try this game with more players at the table which is my plan so that's what i'll eventually do i'll play it off stream with some players and maybe we'll play it on stream in the future with, with those players but again this is a covid future when lockdowns and stay-at-home orders and all that stuff are over um at least where i am so yeah devin says are you planning on beating all the ancient ones no <laughs> no. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I may beat all the ancient ones by accident, but I'm not going to remember which ones I played and which ones I didn't. Yeah, Kate. Exactly, Kate. That's where I was trying to come at it, but i always on the channel, right? I'm always, like, asking for help with the rules, so, and I appreciate Raleigh and everyone else, even Dave uh david who had unmisunderstood rules and we're saying to play this way i appreciate that because then we clear it up for everybody right so even people who maybe were playing it wrong can also learn from my mistakes and and stuff so i totally am okay with that but i was going into today's stream just thinking like uh, whatever man <laughs> it's elder sign i don't know we'll see how it works but kate's saying this is one of those games where i don't worry if we mess up the rules yeah and and again if i'm playing at a table of four players and they're like not heavy gamers i definitely would not try to be like you know keep throwing it down their throat like okay stop stop you can't spend the spell yet you got to wait till this window because in the faq literally there's a timing chart where it's like this is when you choose to do this, this is when you choose to do that you know i would just let them kind of go with it and remind them like do you want to focus a die now that you failed don't forget you can re-roll but i'm not gonna like you know enforce like every timing rule on them and just let them use their items and stuff how they think they work and that kind of thing Jonas says, so is this better than Marvel Champions? I, I don't know how you can compare them. But yes, this orange is better than that apple. <laughs> Jonas, quit trolling. Get out of here. <laughs> Unless you're being serious, you're blowing my mind right now. I don't know why you would ever compare these two games. One's, one's like $30 Arkham themed dice rolling game. Another one's a probably thousands of dollar 
Marvel themed living card game with deck building. I, I don't know. I would if those are the two games you're choosing on buying at one point, that's weird. That's weird to me. And Bob says, come on, Rob, what about me? I said you were correct you were correct once. God damn it. Looks like I have another appointment with some soap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bob, thank you for also correcting and, and confirming some of my rules. I appreciate Bob when we're on the same team. I always feel good about that. Oh, Jonas, you're asking about the X-Men uh, one we were talking about earlier. Uh, and I already forget the title and we even looked it up. Uh, I'll get it up here. One sec, one sec. Uh, BG. Yeah, good call, good call. Yeah, you weren't here before when we probably talked about it, right? Or maybe you were. Mutant Insurrection. Yeah, so this is a reskinning, but they did change some things. But this is basically based off the Elder Sign uh, mechanics. Yeah, who rem no one ever remembers this title, I think. I just call it the new X-Men game from FFG. Hopefully they don't come out with another one. Uh, but yeah, Mutant Insurrection. So this is, they took Richard Launius' design of Elder Sign and they reskinned it with X-Men. But my understanding is it plays pretty much the same. There's just some, like, streamlining and obviously they had to make it fit the theme. Uh, what do I want to see? Images? And I guess it comes with miniatures that everyone's painting? Does that make it automatically cooler because it has miniatures? Yeah, I think it works different, but it, it's still just like a dice placement game, right? You pick an adventure to go on. How can we... Let's go to here. Nope, where is that? Uh, let's go to Fantasy Flight Games. Maybe we can see it. See more information. Oh, they have a game map. Look at that. Mm. You get a product shot or what? Where's my product shot? Just looking for images. There we go. We'll see. It does have adventure cards. But then it has like this like crisis track here where based on where the crisis level is, you're like drawing these. I think this is just like dividing up the mythos deck from like weak to like increasing bad things happening. But I could be wrong. And there's little, oh, there's not miniatures in it. It's just standees, right? So the standees, you start on your little ship here, uh, which I totally forget what that, oh, the blackbird, the blackbird. They start on the Blackbird, and then you go adventuring on these cards, and you're trying to, like, do dice placement and complete the tasks. And I feel like your hero, plus, like, an item, gives you, like, certain dice you get to roll in the pool. So it's a little more interesting, I think, than just grabbing all the green dice and going for it. I feel like this, like, it mixes the colors a little more based on which character you are. I watched, like, a playthrough from FFG, and that's when I decided not to really go after this game because it seemed very basic. But then Elder Sign came up and I figured I'd try it, but I don't know. I don't know if this one's better, but it's not rated better on BGG, but see you later, Jazzy. Um... Oh, this game's more, costs more than Elder Sign? It might have better components. I, I don't know. Like already the standees are adding more cardboard than the super tiny character tokens in Elder Sign. But I do like those custom dice. They look pretty. <laughs> Bob says, don't you ever, ever imply we were on the same team, ever. <laughs> I knew that buggy. <laughs> yeah, so I, again, Jonas, I don't, I don't know. I think you would just go based on theme. So if you like the Arkham Horror theme, more than the Marvel theme, just pick the Arkham Horror one, you know? They're going to be similar games. 
because they're based off of Richard Launius' design of, of Elder Sign. But Richard Launius, I don't think, worked on this game. They just used his base game and some other FFG employee, like, developed it into an X-Men game is how I understand it. But Yeah, Brandon Purdue, whoever that guy is at FFG, he basically changed Elder Sign into an X-Men game using, like, the same mechanics and stuff. Yeah, it looks cool. And it looks like instead of the museum entrance, maybe that's what these cards are, so they kind of like change the effects that are available, maybe? And there's like the adventure cards. And you can have continent missions, which I guess are like out, outer world cards or other world cards, whatever they're called in this game. Flip. If Blob is completed, complete one objective here. I don't know. Like, I like the X-Men theme. Like, I, I would try this one too, but again, I, I don't know. This the Elder Sign didn't wow me, so I feel like this would do the same. Like, even if they just tweaked a few rules, I, I, don't, I don't think you can uh, like change this game into like an amazing, exciting game, in my opinion. But again, I, I'm not one for these like dice roller games. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Jonas says, I do not like dice chucking, but was just curious. And I've never played this game, so I, I don't know which one's better. I, I can't comment. I, I, don't, I don't own both, right? I've never played both. Um, but yeah, I would just assume if you want a Marvel, probably better quality printing, you know, maybe bit, a bit better components since it's like newer. Uh, maybe a better rule book, we'd hope. You know, smaller FAQ. You know, go for this one. I don't know. Oh, Rally says, from what I've read, X-Men, you need to use more than one hero, like, unlike Elder Sign. Oh, no way. Aw. It's probably because the colored dice that they bring to the challenge, right? You probably need to have two heroes worth of dice in the pool, maybe. <laughs> Quip says, is Deadpool a character in that game? Deadpool is my spirit animal. <laughs> a smaller FAQ does sound enticing. <laughs> oh man. I, I don't know who's in the game. I don't know. You clicked on an Elder Sign video, not a Marvel video. Get out of here. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> so tune in tomorrow for Marvel Champions. Uh yeah, we're back tomorrow playing Marvel Champions. Uh we're gonna try our hand at nebula again uh so we're gonna be playing her tomorrow we're gonna change up some decks so after the stream i'm gonna go on marvelcdb.com and start reading through some deck lists seeing what other people have posted maybe somebody's posted like a a good deck against uh nebula or maybe just some different star lord deck um and i'm gonna try to build a deck for tomorrow's alive marvel champions playthrough against nebula again maybe we can beat her and then move on to uh ronin and then we're back for Sunday with more Arkham Horror, the living card game. And then Monday, we're back with more Elder Sign. So on Monday, Mel and I are going to play Elder Sign, I believe, at noon Eastern. Uh, we're going to try this game two-player. So come on back for that. Uh, that's already scheduled. You can hit up, uh, I believe, the playlist link down in the video description or youtube.com uh, forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. And you can set a reminder for any of these live streams you're interested in. Yeah, I'm net decking like a champ. The problem, Jonas, too, is I don't know the whole card pool. So instead of me going through every single card in the box or scrolling through them all online, I like to look at net deck deck lists to see what cards people are including. And maybe I, I misunderstood how a card works or even didn't know about a card in the card pool. And that then I'll see that in, in a bunch of decks and I'll realize, okay, this card is, is important. Uh, and then I kind of like will try that card out, you know. I just use it to kind of help spend less time deck building and, and, and understanding the whole card pool. Uh, I just don't want to put that much time into the deck building side of an LCG. I've just never been like that. Uh, I'd rather just play more. So I want to as quick as possible come up with a deck today and then probably play tonight uh, against Nebula if we can have time. And then we can try again tomorrow and see if we can beat her. Yeah, that's my thought. That's my thought. Again, if anyone has any deck lists, like, uh, I'm looking at you, Matuj. Uh, I'll, I'll reach out in the Discord. 
and you know maybe there's a different deck we can try but yeah i i just want to have a ton of time today to like you know spread out all the marvel champions cards try to build some decks test them out rebuild some decks so i'm i'm taking the shortcut i'm, I'm using the resources from the amazing people that created marvelcdb.com and also the amazing people that take the time to post deck lists and descriptions without you i probably wouldn't even be playing half these lcgs and i know that applies to other people out there because uh, it helps people get into these games and find decks and, and learn new things about cards that they maybe would have never touched before especially as someone who's new to deck building um yeah it's just a, it's a nice way that that exists and i kind of wish that some of these games I like the way Marvel Champions comes with the starter decks built in, but wouldn't it be awesome if like FFG had like an official site that was like, you know, presentable and, not, and don't tell me cardgamedb.com, that site's junk. Um, but yeah, if they had like an official site that people could post decks on um, and they linked it from the rule book, I feel like a lot of newer players would be like less intimidated by these kind of games uh, like Marvel Champions and stuff if uh, they knew net decking was an option. So I like to spread it. I, I don't think it's a negative thing. I think it's great. And yeah, if, if you look down on net decking, screw you. <laughs> ah, I don't care. All right. Uh, and oh yeah, and Jonas says it also lets me blame the author for losing. 100%. 100%. <laughs> uh, no, no. I usually tweak still. I usually change a couple cards. So it then becomes my deck and then I can't blame the creator. So yeah. Oh, Matthias says Elder Sign gets much better with expansions, and X Men still needs those expansions. I think. Uh, so that you think they probably have expansions planned <laughs> for for the X Men game. So, like, how how much is a expansion for Elder Sign? That's my question. How much are those expansions? Oh, uh, do they have the MSRP on FFG's website? I'm, I'm curious. Like, I want to know if you guys are telling me that Elder Sign can be made a better game. How much does that cost if I were to tell somebody, yeah, you should play Elder Sign. You just need like three expansions to make it a decent game. And you have to spend like what? How much? $120? <laughs> That's not worth it. That's silly. Expansion. So the base game US $35, okay? Which is fine. I think that's enough for the content in it. That's a good price. $25 an expansion. So 75 US dollars just to get to three expansions here. I don't know what this grave of consequences is. But that's its own little deck of cards, a print-on-play one, it looks like. So 75. 100, what is that, 110? $110 I'm spending on a dice placement game? Get the hell out of here. No way. No way. It really makes it that good? You feel like it's worth $110 plus tax? No, 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 no. Did that just go in stock while I was on the page? Did you guys see that? Did that just go in stock right now while I was sitting on the page? Or am, is my, do my eyes play tricks on me? It did. Did you see that? Yeah, I just went back in the stream. It, it was not available. I did not know their stock updates live while you're on a page. Did anyone know that it does that? So you could literally sit here waiting for your Arkham Horror expansions just staring at the page. You never have to hit F5. Wow. Wow. So yeah, you don't have to press F5. I have mystical powers. So should I buy the Gates of Arkham? <laughs> is that a sign you need this expansion? Or is that a sign that this is the worst expansion because it's the only one available that nobody's bought yet? <laughs> oh there's even more i didn't even scroll down holy crap 
I didn't even scroll down. One, two, three, four, five, six expansions. How many, how many do you need? How many do you need to make the game good? Which ones are the best ones? I want to hear in the chat. What are you guys saying? You guys are saying the expansions make it better. Which expansions? What, what is the one or two or three expansions? Or do, are you saying I need all five of the box expansions to make it a better game? Because now we're talking like 150 something dollars, 160 dollars, right? Elko says, quickly, go to Roombound. Maybe they printed Unbreakable Bonds. No. Oh, maybe. You never know, right? You never know. So yeah, just keep the page open on, on, on another monitor and just stare at it. Maybe it'll come back in stock. Gigi says, all six expansions and you have to sell your soul. <laughs> so you're telling me... Oh, no way. The 100... What is it? 125, 35, 38, two, $172 plus tax to get everything for Elder Sign. Why would you spend that much on this kind of game? I don't know. It's like just a dice game, I guess. I guess if you have a group that, that loves playing it and, and just keeps wanting to play it over and over again. The game is good. Some expansions will make it better. I wouldn't pay retail for the expansions. Amazon has them cheaper. Okay, okay. Devin says, I got one for Elder Sign. It was $12. Oh, okay, okay. Kate's saying, agree, wait for a sale. And Jonas is saying, don't know. Their printing seems weird. Trying to hunt down Eldritch Horror expansions. And retailer says, nobody knows about FFG products availability from distributors. They appear and disappear. Yep, I've heard that before. Asmodee distribution is like a nightmare to work with. Uh, I've heard that from different store owners over the years. It's like a mess. Uh, in the U.S., the base game is $27 on Amazon right now. And that's both U.S. and Canada. Asmodee distribution is a nightmare. I've heard that from both U.S. store owners and Canadian store owners. I don't know if that's gotten better in the last year since COVID or not. But again, those stores probably aren't really... Unless they're doing online sales. I, I don't know what, if they're ordering too much from Asmodee. Yeah, Velco, exactly my point. Velco is saying you can get Frosthaven for that money. <laughs> uh, you know, or just some other game you could spend like $150 on and I feel like you just get a better game maybe. I don't know. And GG, I know. Some people do like these kind of dice games. I understand. I understand. I understand totally. Obviously they do or these expansions wouldn't exist, right? Obviously, they, this game was popular or is popular. I mean, they're even stocking stuff as we speak. But yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, it's a cool game. That's Elder Sign. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all for watching. Thanks to everyone who supports us on Patreon or clicks the join button and hangs out with us on the live chats. Hit that like button. Helps other people find the channel. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next stream. Bye-bye.